ace Dallas Keuchel will start for the Astros against Yankees right-hander Masahiro Tanaka. The Astros are in the championship series for the first time since 2005. The Yankees' last ALCS appearance was in 2012. In top 25 college football action tomorrow, locally we will see number 22 UCF versus East Carolina at 7 p.m. Scott Duncan, NCN Sports. Are you struggling with addiction or alcohol problems? If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help, and your insurance may offer coverage. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-418-1360. 800-418-1360. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-418-1360. 800-418-1360. If your skin could talk, would you listen? As your skin, I forgive you. I forgive you for poking and popping me when I broke out at 14. I forgive you for that awful belly ring hole you left in me when you were 15. I forgive you for damaging me before prom, on spring break, and at tanning salons when you were 16, 17, 18. But I'm your skin. And if you continue to tan, I hope you can forgive me. Forgive me when wrinkles begin to show and I start developing age spots. Forgive me if I develop melanoma when you're only 22. So please, I'm asking you to stop. Stop tanning now. Our future depends on it. Protect your skin from melanoma, the second most common cancer in young women 15 to 29 years old and protect your future. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Today's hits and yesterday's memories, WCAB Rutherfordton. A shot of truly autumnal air arrives early next week. Until then, we've got a weekend of so-so weather to enjoy. I'm meteorologist Nate Johnson in the North Carolina News Network Weather Center. So-so is actually pretty good. We'll talk about it next. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? In the forest near the side of the road. No need for alarm, sir. The forest is where bears live. But this was no ordinary bear. No ordinary bear? Yeah, one second I'm having a smoke taken in the view. Next thing I know, I am face to face with Smokey Bear. Let me guess, Smokey had a tip for you. He did. He must have seen me toss my cigarette on the ground. He told me never to do that because it only takes one spark to start a wildfire. He's a smart bear. Did you know that nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans? That means nine out of ten wildfires can be prevented. That's what Smokey said. I had no idea. That's why Smokey's famous, and you're not. Good point. Get your Smokey on. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference, because 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Overall, the weekend shaping up to be better than average. It'll be warmer than we'd expect for this time of year, certainly more humid. And I can't completely reel out a few showers, especially tomorrow morning. We may have some fog and drizzle hanging around as well. The afternoon, though, we begin to see more sunshine. Temperatures warming up a little bit, warm up still more on Sunday. Monday, we see our next cold front arrive, and that one, yeah, it means business. It's actually going to bring us a shot of truly North Carolina autumn weather with cool, crisp nights and warm, dry afternoons. It's going to be a beautiful rest of the week once we get past Monday, which, by the way, features a chance for some showers and thunderstorms, something we'll watch. For the rest of this evening, though, if you're heading out, 
date night football, anything, especially if you're going to be out for more than just a few minutes walking, say, from the parking lot into the house or into the movie theater, you're going to want a jacket. It may actually be a little bit on the chilly side, especially if we get the, that mist or drizzle to begin to form again. Lows tonight, mid to upper 50s in the mountains with partly cloudy conditions. We'll see some breaks in the clouds across the rest of the state, but more clouds than anything else. Low to mid 60s for overnight lows. Tomorrow, likely we'll wake up much like we saw today. A lot of cloud cover, some drizzle, fog. But we'll begin to see things clearing out. I think the clearing will be more aggressive tomorrow. More sunshine earlier in the day. Highs in the lower 70s in the northern mountains. Upper 70s for the southern mountains. Mid 70s to around 80 for the rest of the state. Tomorrow night, I think, will be partly cloudy. I don't know that we're going to see much in the way of drizzle, although we have some patchy fog in spots. Then Sunday, other than a little fog in the morning, should be a mostly sunny day, and it'll be warmer across most of the state, at least by a degree or two. 70s to near 80 in the mountains, low to mid-80s for the rest of the state. I'm meteorologist Nate Johnson in the North Carolina News Network Weather Center. This is Dakota Livesay chronicling another true story taken from the 1800s, a time known to all as the Old West. Today's story is an interesting one about an Eastern College graduate who went out west to seek adventure. Do you enjoy hearing stories about people and events from the Old West? If so, you need to check out our series of Old West CDs. One CD is about 16 gunfights told as they really happened. And let me tell you, they weren't anything like Hollywood portrays them. Then we have a CD about 14 women who either helped tame the Old West or made it wilder. Let me assure you men, this is not a sissy CD. Our latest CD is about Tombstone, Arizona Territory. It's stories of 15 people and events that made Tombstone the great boomtown that it was. Each of these CDs contains over an hour of stories, and each costs only $9.95 plus shipping. To get more information, go to www.chronicleoftheoldwest.com. That's chronicleoftheoldwest.com. Or call us at 888-DOG-JAKE. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Cornelius Donahue was born in Philadelphia and graduated from Girard College. Now, he could have spent his life in Eastern high society, but he loved reading dime novels about the West. Intrigued, he gave up the amenities of the East for Texas and the cowboy life. Realizing Cornelius Donahue wasn't a cowboy's name, he changed it to John Hurley. Now in the West, everyone had a nickname, and usually it had something to do with a person's physical makeup. Cornelius had a lame foot, so he was called Lame Johnny. Realizing the cowboy life wasn't for him, Lame Johnny gave it up in favor of horse stealing with his face appearing on wanted posters across Texas in 1876, Johnny went up to Deadwood. There he worked as a deputy sheriff and did a pretty good job at it too. Finally landing a job where he could use his college degree, he became a bookkeeper for a mining company and settled in for a quiet life. But it wasn't to be. A Texas acquaintance came to Deadwood, recognized Johnny, and told everyone about his past. The result was that Johnny lost his job, so he went back to stealing horses and robbing a stagecoach once in a while. Finally, in 1878, a detective named Captain Frank Smith came to town with a warrant for Johnny and arrested him. On October 18, the stage, taking Captain Smith and Johnny to Cheyenne, was stopped by some masked bandits, and they grabbed Johnny. Gang members rescuing their leader? Don't think so. For the next morning... Johnny was found hanging from a tree. To this day, it's remembered with a stream in the southern Black Hills of the Dakotas named Lame Johnny Creek. You've just heard another story from Chronicle of the Old West. I'm Dakota Livesay. It's time to lace up the cleats, fit on the pads, and strap on the helmet. It's time for week nine of high school football Friday night here on the Foothills Low Sports AM 590 WCAB. 
We're broadcasting live via Verizon Wireless from Gastonia, home of the Highland School of Technology, where tonight the Highland Tech Rams will be hosting our undefeated 7-0 Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy Griffins. Our broadcast tonight, not only on AM590, but also on Northland Communications, cable television channel 5 throughout Rutherford County, and you'll find us streaming to a worldwide audience on the Internet at WCABfootball.com. Our Internet web streaming services provided by Bill Teal of the Signature Web Design. And a blessed good evening, football fans. I am Mr. Friday Night, Jay Coombs, alongside Cliff Paul Berry. And tonight, Cliff, the Griffins will try to do what no Rutherford County High School football team has been able to accomplish in 25 years. That being the chance to move to 8-0, and and more importantly than that, 4-0 and in their conference ranks. You know, you're looking at 8-0, that's a huge accomplishment. You look at the max press list, you know, there, there's teams that have been beaten that are still ranked higher than TJ, but once you start getting into that 8-0 and bracket, that's when you start jumping those teams that's had, that's had losses and they start moving up, and it's so important. We were talking about it on the way down here. It's so important on, on the playoffs because you're not ranked number one or two in your, your conference. You could be out. So, I mean, one loss, two losses could put you out of the playoffs. The playoff situation is different this year, and as we get closer to the playoffs, we'll try to explain it in more detail. But basically, fans, here's what it amounts to. In a conference the size of the Southern Piedmont 1A Conference, also the size of the Southwestern 2A Conference, only the top two teams in the conference are guaranteed a position in postseason playoff action. Now... How will they select the at-large teams? This year, for the first time ever, they will go strictly by the rankings provided by Max Preps, the highest-ranked teams who do not automatically qualify as either finishing first or second in their conference. The at-large bids, they will go to the teams that are left, and they will start with the highest rank and move down through until they fill the bracket. And that will still be 64 teams in the 3A and the 2A. But in the 4A and in the 1A playoffs this year, that number has been reduced to 48. So only 48 teams will advance to the postseason in 1A and also in 4A. Now, the logic behind the changes is simple. At the 1A level, we simply don't have as many schools, so a lot of teams were getting into the playoffs. They'd only have one or two wins during the regular season, and they were usually seated very low, and they usually got blown off the field in the first round of action. And so the state, to make it a more competitive uh, playoff system, they have decided that, hey, you're going to need some wins in order to qualify for the playoffs. Well, that was the thing about that playoff setup. Like you said, the one or two. I remember when they first implemented this, that playoff, how to get in the playoff then. I remember Polk County didn't win a game that year, and they were in 1A, and they actually made the playoffs with zero wins. Now, granted, in my mind, I was like, well, what a great story that would be if they upset everybody. And, <laughs> you know, the injuries came back from being hurt, and you know, but still, I mean, that's, you're putting competition. Obviously, a no-win team is going to play the number one team and they're just going to get annihilated. So it was almost like a bye week. So this is more competitive. I get it. I get what the state of North Carolina is doing, and I think so because you can have a really good team. I look at our our other county teams that, you know, they've got South Point and Shelby in their conference. That's basically saying, hey, if you want to go to the playoffs, you're going to have to beat the South Point or Shelby. That's because you are right. Because it is possible you could finish in third place in the Southwest Conference this year. You could be sitting at home to playoff time. Now, for the Griffins, things are looking good at this point. The last time a Rutherford County High School team started off the year 8-0 was the 1992 East Rutherford Cavaliers team 
Bill Smothers as the head coach in his second season. They finished the regular season undefeated at 10-0. And then they ended up advancing to the fourth round of the playoffs before they suffered their first loss. That East Rutherford team went 13-1 and 25 years ago. So tonight the Griffins will try to accomplish something that none of our teams has done since 1992, and that used to improve to 8-0 overall. The Gastonia Highland Tech Rams, they are 2-5 and five overall. They are winless thus far in the conference at 0-3. Now, these two teams have met six times previously over the past number of years, and during those six previous times on the gridiron, the Griffins have won every single matchup. So tonight, on paper, certainly looks like almost a market in the wind column for the Griffins. But fans, it's why we put the ball on the tee each and every Friday night. Every week is unpredictable, and you never know when a big upset could happen. We hope that tonight, but it is Friday the 13th, but hoping that tonight is not one of those nights where the Griffins get caught uh, that Highland Tech would collect their first ever win over a TJ team. We have three other games tonight involving Rutherford County teams. Everybody is on the road this week. In fact, three are right here in Gaston County. One is in Cleveland County. So fans, if you haven't already hopped in the car and started making the trip, you need to do that immediately because there are no games tonight in Rutherford County. All four teams are on the road. Our kickoff here at Gastonia Highland Tech, 7.30 tonight. And we inch our way closer to that. And momentarily we'll be back, uh, have more of a preview of this game between the Griffins and the Rams. Also take a look at the other three games on tap for tonight. You're listening to the Countdown to Kickoff. Visit your friends at Ace Equipment Sales and Service in the Park Lane Plaza for all your lawn and garden equipment needs. Now at Ace, they have a full line of Echo products, trimmers starting at $159, blowers at $159, chainsaws starting at $199, all with a five-year warranty. They also offer the Red Max line of commercial trimmers and blowers. Ace has more parts for most makes and models. Also at Ace, you can pick up batteries, belts, and blades. And as always, Ace provides pickup and delivery service. That's Ace Equipment sales and service in the Park Lane Plaza in Rutherfordton or call them at 286-9781. Farmer's Friend Feed, Seed, and Supplies is your landscaping supplies and feed headquarters. They carry Neutrina feeds, hay, compressed alfalfa hay, and more. Erosion control material is available at Farmer's Friend, dog collars, leases for dogs, and the popular black gold dog food and other brands your dog and cat will love. Check on the wild bird food mix. You'll love the product selection at Farmer's Friend, and you'll love the prices. Check them out, 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, 7.30 till 2. Their phone number is 287-3272. Fountain Electrical Services has been providing quality electrical installation and maintenance since 1946. Quality work includes outdoor lighting, fuse box upgrades, ceiling fans, generators, motion sensors, and so much more. If it's an electrical need, Fountain Services can do it. You can always expect a high level quality of service, dependability and availability you have come to expect from Fountain Electric Services. Call 287-9978 or check the website at fountainservices.com. My dad is one of those guys. When I was your age? Everything was better back in the day. Well, let me tell you. That's why I take him to McDonald's for breakfast, because they make biscuits from scratch. Mm. The old-fashioned way. See? Now that's a biscuit. It's good for him to be right once in a while. Told you. Most locations open 24 hours. High school football Friday night. Foothills, both sports. AM 590 WCAB Rutherford Death. 7 o'clock. And we are 30 minutes away from kickoff here tonight in Gastonia as the Highland Tech Rams get ready to host the Thomas Jefferson Classic going, Academy Griffin. Let's take a look at the other games involving our county teams tonight. Up the road from us, 
at East Gaston, the East Gaston Warriors. They are 1-6 and six overall. They are 0-1 in the Southwestern 2A Conference race. They are hosting the Chase Trojans. Well, likewise, the Trojans are 1-6 and six overall, and they are 0-1 in the conference race. Last week, Shelby shut out Chase by a score of 63 to nothing, and South Point shut out East Gaston by a score of 56 to nothing. So, I hate to say it, fans, but this really is, at this point of the season, it will be the battle for fifth place in the Southwestern Conference. Chase in bad, dire need of a win. They have a good shot of it tonight up the road at East Gaston. But the Warriors, they haven't won a game since week one. So they are hungry as well. And it could be quite a battle tonight between the Trojans and the Warriors. By the way, there has been no recent football history between these two schools. And uh, at least for a couple of decades, they have not met on the football field. Over in Cleveland County, the 6-1 of one Shelby Golden Lions, who are 1-0 in the conference race, are playing host to the Hilltoppers of RS Central. Hilltoppers are now 2-5 and five overall, and following their 47 to nothing loss to East Rutherford last Thursday night, they are 0-1 in the conference. Now, Years ago, they used to call it the Liver Mush Bowl when Central faced Shelby. Well, in the all-time series, Shelby has 53 wins. RS Central has five wins, and there was one tie. The last time that the Hilltoppers defeated Shelby was 27 years ago in 1990 when the Hilltoppers won 20-14. to 14. Since 1990, 18 Shelby victories have been collected over the Hilltoppers. Both teams looking for the win tonight. It will be tough for the Hilltoppers on the road tonight in Shelby. And up the road from us, Ben, at Belmont, the East Rutherford Cavaliers, now 5-2 and two overall and 1-0 and oh in the conference race, face the undefeated 7-0 South Point Red Raiders. Raiders are 1-0 in the conference. As I mentioned, that shutout over East Gaston last week and East Rutherford with their 47 uh, nothing win over Central last Thursday night. This is going to be a tough challenge for the Cavaliers. I think tonight we'll really find out how good is East Rutherford because they have a mammoth task ahead of them. But it is Friday the 13th, and here is where I would like to see an upset happen as the Cavaliers visit the Red Raiders. You have to go back a number of years since these two teams have played football. In fact, the last time they played was 2000. So that has been 17 years since East Rutherford and South Point have met on the football field. 1999 and 2000, South Point collected victories. But in Jerry Cash's first year, 1997 at East Rutherford, and in his second year, 1998, his East Rutherford Cavaliers defeated the South Point Red Raiders by a sizable margin. Well, we'll find out what Coach Cliff Bland and his Cavaliers can do tonight as they travel to Belmont to face the South Point Red Raiders. Now, we don't speak a whole lot about this, but we will as we get closer to the playoffs. Currently in the Max Preps rating system, Shelby is ranked fifth. That is number five in the state. South Point is ranked tenth. That's number ten in the state. East Rutherford is ranked number 141. Then behind them, the Hilltoppers of RS Central, currently number 280. East Gaston, number 318, and the Chase Trojans, number 355. Let's take a look at this Southern Piedmont Conference, and leading the way is undefeated Bessemer City, who's currently ranked number 148. Behind them, Mount Holly, Mountain Island Charter, 
The Raptors ranked 198. Behind them, the Griffins. Thomas Jefferson now ranked number 213. Then you go to Union Academy. The Cardinals are number 248. The Community School of Davidson, who the Griffins defeated at home last Friday night, are currently ranked number 343. Right behind them, Pine Lake Prep, the pride, at number 349. Then we have Cherubble. Actually, I forgot Cherubble's now moved up a little bit to 342. And at the bottom is Highland Tech. Uh, the Rams currently rank number 401. So the Griffins have several tough games coming up next week. At Bessemer City, that could decide the conference title. Then they come back home to Avondale, and they'll face Mount Holly, Mountain Island Charter. That was the team that knocked them out in the third round of the 1A playoffs last year. And then that last week, they will travel to Monroe to face the newest member of the conference, Union Academy. So these next four weeks for the Griffins, going to have a big say is what happens with their record and what happens with their chances to advance to the playoffs this year. So we have set the stage. Our featured game of the night is Thomas Jefferson at Highland Tech. RS Central tonight is at Shelby. Chase is at East Gaston, East Rutherford at South Point. We'll be back momentarily. The countdown to kickoff. For dependable and professional auto service, trust your car to Tri-City Tire Service. Brakes, tires, alignments, inspections, oil changes, and now Tri-City Tire is your complete exhaust service station. Commercial and farm tires are available at Tri-City Tire, and they are Rutherford County's number one dealership for interstate batteries, offering 24-hour roadside service. Tri-City Tire is proud to announce they will now offer U-Haul trucks, trailers, towing equipment, support rental items, and in-store pickup for boxes. They're open Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturday, 7.30 to 1.00. Tri-City Tire on the corner of Mountain Street and Railroad Avenue in Rutherford. Their number is 287-8778. That's 287-8778. Man, this is not what I expected to see at this party. Yeah, I know. I want to hang out and have a good time, but I'm not cool with the drinking. This isn't going to end well. I want a boat, but look at Jimmy. He's supposed to be our ride. I'm not getting in a car with him. He should not be driving. Or drinking. Look, my parents talk about this stuff all the time. We have a deal. I can call them any time I need a safe ride home. No questions asked unless someone's in danger. What do you say? Yeah, call your folks, and maybe they can make sure Jimmy's okay. We need to make sure he's safe, too. Parents, United Way's Youth Council reminds you to talk with your kids about playing it smart and cool when they're out with friends. Talk with them about never getting into a car with an impaired driver, always finding a trusted adult to help, and taking care of themselves by not getting impaired, because it's cool for us kids to hang out together, but not at a funeral. For more information about Safe Road Safe Homes, call 211 or visit online at www.nc211.org. Hello, this is Dwayne Hunt with Insurance Services Associates. Are you on disability? Or maybe you're on Medicare? Or maybe both? Come see me, Dwayne Hunt, at Insurance Services Associates about a Medicare Advantage product brought to you by Humana. Please give me a call, 245 5301, at Insurance Services Associates, 127 East Trade Street, Forest City. High School Football Friday night, AM 590 WCAB. Our broadcast coverage brought to you in part this season by our good friends at the United Way of Rutherford County. Also by Tri-City Tire. McDonald's with three locations in Rutherford County. Our thanks to go for the termite and pest control. Also to Tri-City Concrete and Sisk Family Forum. Just a few of the many sponsors who make these broadcasts possible each and every week on AM 590, on Northlink Communications Cable Television Channel 5, and on the World Wide Web as we stream live at WCABfootball.com. Our internet web streaming services are provided by the man, Bill Teal of Signature Web Designs. 7.30 kickoff, we're about 20 minutes away here tonight in Gastonia. Jay Coombs along with Cliff Ballberry. And let's take a look at the other conference games tonight 
in the Southern Piedmont race. Undefeated, 7-0 and 3-0, Bessemer City is on the road tonight, taking on the Pine Lake Prep Pride. Pride is now 3-4 and four overall. They are 1-2 and two in the conference race. Cherville is 2-5 and five overall. They are winless at 0-3 in the Southern Piedmont Conference race. They travel to Monroe tonight to face the Union Academy. The Cardinals are 4-3 and three overall. They are 1-2 and two in the conference. And the Mountain Island Charter Raptors at 5-2 and two overall, 2-1 two and one in the conference. They travel to Davidson tonight to take on the Spartans of the Community School of Davidson, who are now 3-4 and four overall and 2-1 and one in the Southern Piedmont Conference. Well, I have to describe our uh, setup here tonight in Gastonia at Highland Day. Cliff, this is probably the closest we have ever been to the sidelines of a football field. Uh, Jay, I can't say anything bad about the coaching from the uh, the home team because their coach will hear me and want to fight, and I, I can't get into that tonight. Their ball players are literally the one. If you go to watch a, a, a football game, you see the square cut out for the players to stand in. Understand that we are just at that square where we could have players turn around and talk to us and say, hey, my name's so-and-so, get ready to say my name. And uh, catch a pass. I'm looking forward to Jay doing an end zone dance tonight. Yeah, I right here on the sidelines, I feel like, hey, I'm open. Hit me right here in the chest. I'll hold on to it. Uh, I'll try to collect some points. And if need be, maybe transfer those points to East or Central or Chase. Uh, they may need a few extra points today. They may. <laughs> so that is the setup here tonight in the Southern Piedmont Conference. Uh, let's take a look real quick at the conference standings. And right now, there are two undefeated teams at the top of the conference. That being, of course, Bessemer City and Thomas Jefferson. The Griffins and the Yellow Jackets are both undefeated in the conference at 3-0. and Just one step behind. The Mountain Island Charter Raptors at 2-1. and Also, the Community School of Davidson at 2-1. and Union Academy is 1-2. and Pine Lake Prep is 1-2. and And then we have Cherville and Highland Tech in the 7th, 8th positions with records of 0-3 in the conference. Conference play is a Southwestern conference. Only got started last week. Right now we have three teams 1-0. We have three teams that are 0-1. South Point, Shelby, East Rutherford, all of 1-0. Central, East Gaston, Chase, all at 0-1. And of course, in that small six-team conference, there are only five conference games to be played. For the Griffins, they are in an eight-team conference. Therefore, they will have seven conference games this season, tonight being their fourth here in Gastonia at Highland Tech. Fans, you want to be sure to tune in tonight. Stay tuned in for the fifth quarter. That is our post-game show. Well, tonight, during the fifth quarter, one of our Griffins will be this week's AM590 WCAB McDonald's Player of the Game. Cliff, have you ever had a need for a trophy or a plaque or an official award? Yes, Jay. Where do I go? I've got great news. You need to do business locally with Christy Carlisle at KC Lancaster. Fans for many years, Pete and Don McMahon ran the House of Awards in Forest City. For over three decades, they were the leader when it came to trophies, plaques, other forms of recognition, and specialized engraving needs. Daughter, Christy Carlisle, took over the business a couple of years ago. Christy made a bold decision. She said, I think I can save a whole lot of money if I close the storefront of West Main Street in Forest City and move everything into my house. Now, that has resulted in in a tremendous drop with the overhead, and Christy is passing the savings on to you, her customers. So whenever you have a need for trophies, plaques, awards, or engraving needs, 
you'll want to be sure to do business locally with Christy Carlisle at KC Lancasters. Now, there's no minimum, no maximum. You may need one trophy. You, you may need 100 trophies. You may need one plaque. You may need 50 plaques. Christy never has a minimum or a maximum. And here's the best news of all. Yes, you can do business with an out-of-town firm. Yes, you may be able to find you quite a deal online. But what happens whenever the trophy or the plaque arrives and there's a mistake, there's a misspelling, there's a typo, something is wrong? Man, you could waste a whole lot of time and uh, suffer a lot of embarrassment if you have to box it back up, ship it off, and then wait sometimes weeks before the corrected person is returned to you. Well, when there's a problem locally, sometimes Christy can take care of it in a matter of minutes, if not very short turnaround time. So why not leave the money in Rutherford County, invest in Rutherford County, and spend your money locally. Christy Carlisle at KC Lancasters. Now, you can contact Christy via email at kc.lancasters at aol.com. That's kc.lancasters at aol.com. Or if you'd like to call Christy, she is here tonight in Gastonia. Her telephone number is 305-4811. It's 305-4811. Fans, remember to honor someone with style. Make it an honor for Christy Carlisle and KC Lancaster. Cliff, we are so close to the playing field. Look at this. Coach Hicks is We're right here. Up. We can talk to Coach Hicks from where we're broadcasting from. This, this is super. Yeah, he's standing on the field, and I'd say he's 10 feet away from me right now. And he's yeah. actually on the playing field. If he had a ball right now, he could hand it off to us. We could head right to the end So I believe he's walking over here. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to Coach Cash already. They're getting their game plan laid out. How about this coach on the sideline? <laughs> Coach Hicks is on the sidelines there. Coach, what do you expect tonight with the Rams? Is it going to be a challenge? Um, they're much improved than, than they have been in the last four or five years since we've seen the conference. Numbers are really good. Offensively, they're, they're better than they've ever been. So if they ever was a trap game, this is it. Wow. Griffins have never lost to the Rams. No. Nah. Now, I guess you've had to remind your players during practice this week, don't look past these guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. I told them, you know, all the hype right now is next week will be a big showdown with us in Bessemer City for a conference championship. But if we look past these guys, there won't be no conference championship next week. So we have to stay focused on what's at hand today. Got a good game plan ready? I believe so. I believe so. We're gonna, I, I think we're going to try to run the ball tonight and try to clean up the running game for next week. And, yeah, and we'll go forward from there, and hopefully things work out the way we want them to. Okay, Coach. Good luck. Hey, I appreciate let's, it. Thank let's you. Let's get a win. All right. Coach Jamie Hicks, assistant coach of the Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy Griffins. Griffins trying to do what no Rutherford County team has done in 25 years, and that's improved to 8 and 0 here tonight in Gastonia. We'll be back momentarily. You're listening to the Countdown to Kickoff. Go Force Termite and Pest Control is your dependable pest control company for Rutherford County. You can always count on Go Force for complete home inspections, moisture and water control, structural repairs, and waterproofing. Go Force offers professional work and customer service that is always guaranteed. Call David today at 287 3188. That's 287 3188. They are North Carolina licensed and have received the best of Rutherford County in pest control. Located on North Washington Street in Rutherfordton, Big or small, Go Force Termite and Pest Control can handle it all. Quality service at a value is what Tri-City Concrete Company, located on Withrow Road in Forest City, stands for. Whatever job you need, big or small, you can depend on these guys to get the job done professionally. Tri-City Concrete has been serving Rutherford and surrounding counties for over 30 years in concrete perfection. Give the hard job to the experts. Call Steve or Bill today at 245-2011. Tri-City Concrete, Withrow Road, Forest City. Sit back and relax. This mud's for you. Compliments of Tri-City Concrete. 
Richmond Hill Apartments in Rutherford could be the home you've been looking for. Richmond Hill Apartments are built for seniors 62 and up or disabled 50 years and up and they're handicap accessible. One bedroom units are available and project based Section 8 assistance is available and based on income restrictions apply. This could be what you've been looking for. Contact Richmond Hill Apartments today at 287 2578 for more information between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. This could be your home sweet home. Professionally managed by Community Management Corporation and an equal housing opportunity. Again, that phone number is 287-2578, 287-2578. Richmond Hill Apartments, Butler Street in Rutherfordton, a property built for what should be your most enjoyable years. Come live with us at Richmond Hill. Friends don't let friends tune to any other radio station. Good friends recommend AM59. Shouldn't you be a good friend? High school football Friday night on the Mighty 590 WCAB. 7.30 kickoff is getting close here in Gastonia. We're broadcasting tonight's game live via Verizon Wireless. It is the Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy Griffins on the road tonight at the Highland School of Technology, home of the Rams. High school football Friday night being brought to you in part by our good friends at Farmer's Friend, Feed, Seed, and Supply. Also by the good folks at Fountain Electric, Ace Equipment, Sales and Service. Also, our thanks to the drop-in food stores with locations throughout Rutherford County, Lifestyles, Wellness, and Spa. Andrew Tisdale with Edward Jones in the Food Line Shopping Center in Rutherford, and to McCurry Deck Motors. Jay Coons along with Cliff Palmieri. Cliff, I kind of thought at the beginning of the night, I thought Coach Cash usually likes to call the games from up in the press box. And I looked at the press box here and I said, well, I think Coach Cash is going to have to be on the sidelines tonight. But we turn around and behind us, he did find a place in the press box. So Coach Jerry Cash will be calling the action from up above us here at uh, the Rams Stadium. We're going to pause now momentarily for our national anthem. tonight uh, singing our national anthem. Now we await the co-captains to arrive and momentarily we will have the coin toss here tonight at Highland Tech. Cliff and I will have to dodge the players momentarily as they will literally be just a couple of feet behind us, actually inches behind us, when they come into the stadium. Uh, this, this is the closest we have ever been to the playing field in all of the years that we have been doing these uh, Friday night broadcasts, kitchen you not tonight, we are right 
off at the sidelines. It looks like tonight we're representing Highland Tech. Uh, you can look here. I believe that's number eight, Caleb Hill. He should be the starting quarterback. Uh, looks like I've got number six out there. That would be Jonathan Faisden. Uh In the middle, let's see if I can get you eight. 68, the Gavin Sadak, Buchanan. And number 21 is Gavin Davis. Okay, there's Max Robbins, number eight for the Griffins. And let's see who else is out there tonight for the Griffins. Spencer Watts, number 88. Yep, and it looks like I see a number 35, is that right? 35 is, uh, we don't have a 35. Okay, I'm trying to catch it, maybe an 85. Sure. Now, now they blocked my view. Fans are kitchen you on. I'm right at ground level tonight, so it's going to be very difficult, uh, especially when a team gets to the far left end of the field, because we are sitting on about the 27 yard line on the home side of the field. It is going to make the call somewhat interesting. It is number 85 for the Griffins. Number 85 is. Hold on a second. Uh, Donald Ford, and I'm not sure that may be, we'll find out up there. Oh, number 81. Number 81 is Cutler Shaw. So Highland Tech has won the coin toss, and the Rams have deferred their option to the beginning of uh, the third quarter. So that means that the Griffins will actually start tonight on offense, and the Griffins coming out in all white with the burgundy and gold trim. It's white jerseys with white pants. And the Highland Tech Rams looking more like a visitor's team here tonight as they have come out in the solid, I suppose that is, uh, I guess it's black, isn't it? Looks like with blue and gold trim. Here comes Highland Tech now. We were talking about them having to move out of their way. They're about to come marching by and right behind us here. So, momentarily, the Rams will be coming on to the field right behind us. Understand they like to move up through the stands and they come back down from the top of the stand. So, the Rams now entering the stadium and they march behind us and they proceed to the home side of the field where they will move up to the top of the stand and then come back down. And their fans rise to their feet, standing ovation for their home team. You know, Jay, they're, they're honestly a lot bigger than I was expecting. I actually had to look up to just about the first half of, of them. So, I mean... Now I'm 5'11", so, I mean, that's putting them, and I understand they're wearing cleats somewhere in tennis shoes, so I would say it still puts them at least six foot tall, even without cleats on. And now they come down from the bleachers at the opposite end, and momentarily they'll be headed towards the sideline, and it's just a matter of a minute. We'll put the ball on the tee, and we'll be ready to kick it off on week nine of high school football Friday night here on AM 590 WCAB. Broadcasting live from Gaston County via Verizon Wireless. And the Griffins take to the field. And they are ready for the opening kickoff. Now the Rams come sprinting down this side of the field. They will be literally right in front of us. And this will be very interesting to call the action from the sideline. I see back deep for the Griffins is no McMullen. He'll try for a possible return of this opening kick. You know, I think it's interesting the call to kick off to the Griffins because, you know, we we all know that Thomas Jefferson has a hot offense, and why would you want to put them out unless you think we're going to go down there, we're going to punch them in the mouth and, and stop them from getting any yards and set the statement early. We'll find out momentarily, if that was a wise move on the part of the Rams winning the coin toss. Now, deep kick. This one, oh no, it hits a Griffins player. It goes back into the end zone. 
He should actually down it there, but nope, he's going to run out with it. That's number seven, Shamar Petty. And, uh, of course, from this angle, we cannot see exactly how far out he has come. Looks like maybe the 30. <laughs> I may have to get a chair and stand it. I don't know if that's going to help. Okay, the Griffins are at their end of the field. We do know that much. The side, no, I can't really tell from the sideline markers here either. We do know it's first and ten right now. It is the third. And it is Bill Lay standing to the left of Nomi McMullen's Griffin's quarterback. Shotgun snap on the way. And off is to Bill Lay. Lay takes off to the left side, turning that corner. Picks up about three yards. I'll have to uh, depend on the PA announcer from this end of the field. Griffin's moving from left to right here in the opening quarter of the play. Yeah, I believe he got a little bit more than three. It looks like he got about eight. Okay, second down. <laughs> I do know that. And the snap goes to McMillan's, and this time I believe he has kept it, and he cuts out to the far side of the field. And Wow, that was number eight. That was Max Robinson Robbins yeah. on the run. Okay. Max gets good distance. Now they're getting up toward this end of the field. I think I can almost see they are in Rams territory. And it looks like the 45-yard line. First and 10 Griffins at the Rams 45. Here's the snap. McMullen's this time handing off. Moving from left to right is Bill Lay, and uh, he is across the 35. It looks like he is tackled up at about the 34-yard line. It looks like uh, Highland Tech has a lot of beef up front on their defensive line. Their largest players are definitely playing their defensive front, but their faster players are, are playing safety and corner. But there is a lot of meat up front, so it's tough sledding. Another first down for the Griffins. First and 10 at the Rams, 34. Snap to McMullins this time. Hands off to Lay. Lay working on that left side across the 30, across the 25. He's taken off over on the far side of the field. And Bill Lay is moving it all the way up to about the 16-yard line. Man, he's just a work workhorse. He lowers his shoulder and just drives through people. And it's another first down for Thomas Jefferson here in the first quarter on their first offensive drive. Looks like it'll be first and 10 from the Rams 16. Hitting on the snap, McMullins this time handing off again to Bill Lay. Bill Lay is going to race his way into the end zone from 16 yards out. And Bill Lay has the first six points of the night. Touchdown. Griffins. He was untouched. He, he went up right up the middle and got through the line. The offensive line did a good job, opened up a huge hole for him and walked into the end zone. Now we await the point after kick. Bill to hold. He's up. Whistles blow at the snap. Let's see what our call is. Encroachment on the Rams. The Rams, of course, it's – I'd almost decline it and just kick it because you could throw your, your kicker off a little bit by moving it forward, even just half the distance. Kickers are a very superstitious type of player. Xander Bell will try it again. Here's a snap. Here's Bell's kick, and it is through the uprights. It is good, and it's over the school building. 10-11 to go, and the Griffins have taken their opening offensive drive the length of the field, and it is capitalized by a Bill Lay 16-yard touchdown run, and that puts the Griffins up 7 to nothing over Highland Tech. This is high school football Friday night.
Here's what our customers think about McCurry Deck Chevrolet Buick GMC. I love my McCurry Deck Buick. I love my McCurry Deck Chevrolet. We, we love, love our McCurry, McCurry Deck, Deck GMC. GMC. We guarantee you'll love McCurry Deck Chevrolet Buick GMC for a city. I am definitely a McCurry Deck customer for life. I love the price and the McCurry Deck Customer for Life Rewards Program. It gives you up to $3,000 or more in rewards. Take the easy drive to savings. McCurry Deck for a city. Discover the rewards of being a customer for life. High school football Friday night. Griffins jump out first, seven to nothing, early in the first quarter here in Gastonia at Highland Tech. And now the kick on the way, following Bill Lay's 16-yard touchdown run, and the Rams will have their first opportunity to touch the football tonight. Here's the kick. Boy, this is a dandy. This is going to go all the way back and. Slips and falls, wow. and it is going to be down there. And is that about the five-yard line? It looks like he just couldn't get. You know, it's got a little mist in the air. The ground slick, and he just couldn't get any traction. They have a little bit of a drizzle here tonight in Gastonia. It's not enough to be a big nuisance, but certainly can cause a problem on the playing field. Now, Highland Tech, their first offensive possession of the night. They serve from their five. Moving from right to left. It's like Martin Jr. is there. And it takes a snap and rolling out to the far side and picking up some great yardage up to about the 15, maybe the 16 yard line. All right. Highland Tech showing that, hey, we can run this ball too. So. As I was saying, it looks like uh, Van Martin Jr. is their starting quarterback. He's a senior, he's 5'8", 160 pounds. Here's a snap in shotgun. Here's a handoff. Oh, brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that play. That is number eight. Uh, Caleb Hill. Yeah, he was tackled by number 84, Joshua Poe. Who they did a little read option. Joshua Poe was not pulled. Lost about a yard. Second and 11 for the Rams from their 15-yard line. Now an official timeout. You know, I was wondering how the defense of the Griffins will respond with, uh, with Matthew Martin and Stephen Hargett out. You know, that's their uh, their safety, their free safety, and their safety in a corner, you know, starting out this week. Let's see how their defense responds. To it. Second and 11 for the Rams. Shotgun stamp to the quarterback. He's looking. Now rolls out to his right side and heading off. Now trying to cut back in toward the middle. Six, let's see, 64 for TJ. TJ, Caleb Camp did a good job of fighting the, the offensive tackle. The tackle had the better hand. He just kept working to come back up behind the quarterback and make that back. It's like a loss of a couple more yards on the play. It's going to be a third and long for the Rams. Snap goes to the quarterback this time. Trying to work straight ahead and very short yardage picked up there. And again, that is Caleb Hill. Maybe got back a yard, maybe two at the most, but now fourth and about 14. So a punt forthcoming from Highland Tech. 8.15 to go in the opening quarter of play. The snap. Ooh, nice punt. This one is going to bounce off of Griffin's player. Has to pick it back up. He is quickly dropped at the 40-yard line. I believe that was Nomi. Yeah, Nomi, uh, like, like I said, ball slick. A little wet out here, so had a little bit of trouble holding on to that, but lucky to hold on to it. But then uh, Rams right there to tackle him at the 40. So to be first and 10 for the Griffins, they start this drive with great field position at the Rams' 40-yard line. McMillan, shotgun snap on the way. Lay stands to his right. Handoff is to Bill Lay. Lay turns that left corner. Works out around the end and 
He picks up five yards up to the 35. They're doing a lot of uh, different you know, formations tonight than they normally do. They're doing a lot of shifting, a lot of, you know, just motion. They'll motion one guy, he'll stop, then they'll motion another guy in the same play. Looks like the game plan, too, keeping it on the ground. Second and five for TJ. Here's the snap. McMillan's skin handing off to Bill Lay. Lay, big! Oh, Lay is across the 20! And Bill Lay takes it all the way up to the Rams' 18-yard line. Bill Lay, the free safety come up to make a play, and, and if I'm a free safety and I'm going after Bill Lay, I'm going to go for his legs. He, he tried to do that, and Bill just dropped his shoulder and just drove him into the dirt. First and 10, Thomas Jefferson, Highland Tech, 18-yard line. They lead it 7 to nothing here in the first quarter. Now the handoff this time again. Bill Lay, play over on the left side. And he takes it up to about the 15 for a gain of three. Brings up third down for the Griffins. I believe this is the longest we went at a TJ game without a pass being thrown. Have I had a, haven't had a pass attempt yet. McMullen is still in shotgun. Here's the snap. And again, let's give it to... This time around, that is Miller Alton, I believe. Number five. That is Miller Alton, Alton. yeah. Miller picks up positive yardage. Looks like he's up to about the five-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down for the Griffin. Should be first and go. It is first and go, TJ. Looks like the ball is at the Highland Tech five-yard line. You can probably hear the Rams players... We are literally just two feet away from them. First and go, Griffins. Here's the snap to Nomi McMullins. He's going to keep it himself. He moves straight ahead and may have got back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be it for Nomi. You know, it shows you how good Nomi is, though. I mean, because you've got the Rams over here, and they're excited that they stopped him for like a two-yard game. You know, that's a, that's a win for them, and that's what you got to do with your team. you got to get these little small victories. Stop Nomi, keep going. Now, I don't want them to stop Nomi, but obviously they do. Second and goal for the Griffins. Yeah, McMullins takes the shotgun snap. This time hands off to Lay. Lay trying to work that left side, and, well, they stack him up. He did not make it to the end zone. Now it looks like he is down to about the two. He'll bring up third and go for the Griffins. Five fifteen to go here in the opening quarter. Griffins leading seven to nothing. Trying to get six more here. Step to McMullins. And up uh, is to Bill Lay this time, and Lay dives ahead. And no, he has stopped at the one-yard line. Did not get in. Now it's decision time for TJ. It'll be fourth and go. And I believe they are going. Highland Tech takes the time out. 4.50 to go. Opening quarter of play. Right now, Griffin 7, Rams nothing. This is high school football Friday night. It's a for sure thing. Sisk Family Ford in Forest City is earning a quality reputation for offering an attractive inventory of new and used cars and trucks. If you want a new Ford truck, you'll be a smart shopper to let Sisk Family Ford quote you a deal. From a car for the newlywed to the car for the large family. Let the Sisk Family Company help your family get the best deal. Sisk Family Ford, Oak Street, Forest City. High School Football Friday night on AM 590 WCAB. Right up the road in Belmont. Nine minutes to go in the opening quarter. South Point has jumped out to an early 7 to nothing lead over East Rutherford. Our thanks to Chris Clark for that update from Belmont. It is fourth and go. Griffins will go for it. From the one-yard line, Bill Lay into the end zone. Touchdown, 
Griffins. So Bill Lay collects his second touchdown of the young evening. And this one will come with 444 to go in the opening quarter of play. Bill Lay with a 16-yard earlier. Now one yard. Touchdown dive. And Xander Bell on for the second time tonight. It's second point after kick. And this one goes sailing over the building as well. It's through the uprights. It is good. So with 444 to go. In the opening quarter of play, it's now TJ 14, Highland Tech nothing. This is high school football Friday night. You can fall into fitness at Lifestyle Wellness and Spa today and no payment due until January 2018. That's right. Join today and pay first month's dues and no payment till January 2018. Your body has incredible potential. Take care of it by getting fit this fall. Enjoy indoor heated pool, outdoor walking track, massage service, and so much more. Lifestyle Wellness and Spa accepts silver sneakers and silver fit. Go ahead, get started on a new you while this fall fitness deal is underway. Only at Lifestyle Wellness and Spa, Oak Street, Forest City, family owned since 1988. High School Football Friday night, AM 590 WCAB. Our coverage is being brought to you in part this season by our good friends at the RLH Law Firm. Also, our thanks to Duke Energy, Fat Tracy's Barbecue, and Insurance Service Associates. Just a few. Of the many sponsors who make these broadcasts possible each and every Friday evening. Now the kick following Lay's touchdown squid kick. And this one is going to be covered up by the Rams right up at about their 40-yard line. So they'll have decent field position to start their second offensive drive of the night from their own 40. Broadcasting live via Verizon Wireless. First time ever for us here at Gastonia Highland School of Technology. First and ten for the Rams. This is snap to the quarterback in shotgun formation. Oh, the Griffins defense comes flaring through the blitz. Wow. And they nail him for a five-yard loss back at the 35. It was... You couldn't even say, hey, it was this person that made the tackle. It was like the five defenders jumped on them at the same time. The whole bunch of Griffins in on that stop. Second and 15 for the Rams. Actually a good spot. They put it up at uh, about the 38. So officially, I guess, the loss is two. That's a completed pass. The young man, the uh, quarterback threw it low. At number 21 for Highland Tech. Let's give him some credit for that catch, uh, Gavin Davis got his hands down and scooped it right before it hit, to the, gr- hit the ground. So, yeah, I thought it looked like it had hit the ground, but nope, he got his hands underneath the, the official right there on top of it. And yeah, it's going to bring up third and about seven. This quarterback rolling back, has some time in the pocket, launching a deep pass attempt way down the side of the field, and it is battered way incomplete. That young man has an arm on him. That is a beautiful pass. Just uh, the wide receiver couldn't get open. Wiley Van Martin Jr., five foot eight, hundred sixty pound senior, number one starting quarterback for this Rams team. Wiley Van Martin. That almost sounds like a rock band name. <laughs> now fourth down. Rams show the punt it away. And this one is going to take a bounce. And McMullins wisely lets it roll out of bounds. Yeah, I can't tell, but probably down around the 20. I should have brought Noah for us to run down there and get our spot. <laughs> kidding. We could use Noah to run up and down the sidelines and say, hey, you know what else? We need a drone. If we had a drone, yeah, we could fly it overhead and put the monitor. If we could. Uh, Jim Bishop, uh, WCAB football needs a drone <laughs> for when we come to Highland Tech. It is first and ten for the Griffins. They lead fourteen to nothing here in the opening quarter. 
Here's McMullins with the snap. Looks like a handoff goes to Lay. Lay's over on the left side. Has big yardage. And he is up to, could be up to about the 35, maybe even more than that. You know, whoever's making Bill Lay's highlight reel for colleges, if that's what he's wanting to do is go on to college play football, if they don't add the song Here Comes the Boom to his, his theme music, there's something wrong because he lowers his shoulder at the perfect time every time. He always sticks whoever he hits in the dirt. Looks like second down and a long two for the Griffins. Here's a staff to McMullins this time. Coming out to the near side, turning that right corner. Max Robbins. Max Robbins. If he just had longer cleats. It, it is a slick service out there tonight. I, I find it, you know, we don't see Robbins rushing that much. Usually he is a wide out, and we're calling his name for catches. You know, may, maybe that's something Coach Cass seen on field. Maybe they can cover the pass very well. And so he's like, you know what, we'll just run the ball until, until you bring your corners up. 2.20 to go in the opening quarter here in Gastonia. Third, very short. Here's McMullins now looking to air out his first pass. Tempo nice, and it's caught. And then quickly tackled up the 30-yard line. That's Kobe Silva with the first pass of the game. Big reception there by the sophomore, Silva. And it is going to set the Griffins up literally right in front of us. First and 10 at the Highland Tech 30. Jay almost reached out and patted him on the back after he caught that. It was a beautiful catch. Beautiful placement on uh, Nomi's part, too. First and 10, Griffins. Mullins ready for the snap. And the handoff here to Miller out out. Out around the left side, has block, still on his feet. Miller Alton has taken it across the 20, up to about the 19. You know, Miller Alton and Bill Lake complement each other well. You've got the shifty, elusive back in, in out, and then you got the bruiser back with with Lake, and they just they just feed on you. They wear you out. South Point has now jumped out 14 to nothing over East Rutherford. Ouch. Here's the snap. Here's a handoff to Bill Lay. Lay taking off right after the middle. Now comes back and to the right, and he is through it. It's going to be a touchdown for Bill Lay. Did you see that spin move? He had two defenders draped on him. He spun out of them, and then the, the safety's there, and he just drove the safety on into the end zone. Quickly becoming the Bill Lay Show, his third rushing touchdown of the night, that being a 19-yarder in addition to his 16 and his one-yard walk-in earlier in the quarter. Xander Bell back on for the point after kick. Lay to, oh, that's good to play. And uh, Bell is going to have to fall on the football. Bad snap. Got away from him. So the point after attempt fails on a bad snap, but it is going to leave the Griffins with a 20 to nothing lead with a minute 35 to go in the opening quarter of play. You're listening to High School Football Friday Night. Farmer's Friend Feed, Seed, and Supplies is your landscaping supplies and feed headquarters. They carry Neutrina feeds, hay, compressed alfalfa hay, and more. Erosion control material is available at Farmer's Friend, dog collars, leases for dogs, and the popular black gold dog food and other brands your dog and cat will love. Check on the wild bird food mix. You'll love the product selection at Farmer's Friend, and you'll love the prices. Check them out, 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, 7.30 till 2. Their phone number is 287-3272. High School Football Friday night. Foothills Most Sports, AM 590, WCKB. A big game coming up on the radio and college football action tomorrow. Tar Heels, University of North Carolina, up against Virginia. It'll be a 1.30 countdown to kickoff tomorrow afternoon. Now the kick following Bill Lay's third touchdown of the night. This one being returned by the Rams. and Looks like across the 30, up to about the 32. So a nice return on the kick. You know, even the 
even though they're down 20 to nothing in the first quarter, the atmosphere on their sideline is pretty well. They're, they're still cheering on their players, and, yep, enthusiasm still there. They'll start this drive from their 32-yard line. First and 10 for the Rams. Martin, quarterback, takes a hand or takes a step, hands off. No gain on the play. Just got an update from uh, Chase East Casting. It's zero to zero at the end of the first quarter. Chase really looking to get a win tonight against the Warriors. Both teams are one and six overall. Zero and one in conference play. Second and ten for the Rams. Here's the snap. Quarterback Martin rolls back now, launching a deep pass attempt way over the far side of the field. A little bit overthrown, incomplete. You know, I, I think Shamar uh, over there, he, he misjudged it. And I think the wide receiver did too, because if you notice, there's a shadow on that field. That's what uh, the Martins were telling us from, you know, the, the team mom, dad, the awesome Martins from CJ. Scott They're, Lynn. Yeah, they were talking about uh, how, how the field has a shadow on it. It definitely has one in that spot. This is now going to bring up third and ten. Martin rolls back once again, launching and almost an interception there. Ball's incomplete. So facing fourth and ten, it looks like Highland Tech will have to put the football away. Still a little bit of drizzle in the air here in Gastonia. Certainly not enough that we're getting wet, but you can see on surfaces that there's a little bit of moisture. Yeah, it's definitely it's got everything wet out here. Short Very time. high punt that goes way up in the air, and then the Rams will down it. But this is going to end up right about midfield. Looks like right at the 50. Yeah, your coach Cash, and you see that punt. It kind of scares you. I mean, you're thinking, oh, we're going to get good field position. But you've got a lot of players that don't know the ball is directly over their head coming down. That almost happened. Spanish point. Looks like it may be just the side of the 50. It may be at the Highland Tech 48, 47, 48 yard line. Again, my apologies, but we are so we are at field level tonight. So it's hard to uh, get the right viewpoint. Here's the snap to McMullins. McMullins this time handing off. Man coming. That's Bill Lay again. Bill Lay right up the middle there. Short gain on the play for Bill Lay. Looks like he picked up about a yard. That's probably the least amount of yards he's picked up carrying the ball. We're down to 10 seconds. This could be the last play if they get it off in time in the first quarter. Uh oh. Taking the time. Yep, they're going to get the snap, I think, just in time. This will be the final play of the quarter. And McMullins with a long pass attempt way up the field, looking for number seven, Petty. But the ball's incomplete. Yeah, okay. that will be the end of quarter number one. It just was outside of his reach. So, I mean, beautiful throw, though. So, we have played one quarter of football here in Gastonia tonight. Thomas Jefferson trying to improve to 8-0, and oh, and they are on the scoreboard first. It's Thomas Jefferson 20, Highland Tech nothing. This is high school football Friday night. Welcome to McDonald's. Uh, post to a very in cafe. I'm sorry? Did you push a voir in cafe? Oh, ma'am. Our coffee is fancy, but it's not schmancy. Oh, okay. Then I'll have a small premium roast coffee. <laughs> sure. And you don't even have to pay in euros. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> More sophisticated taste to love. McDonald's premium roast coffee is made with a gourmet blend of Arabica beans. And now get any size for just a dollar. Prices and participation may vary. A la carte only. 
Visit your friends at Ace Equipment Sales and Service in the Park Lane Plaza for all your lawn and garden equipment needs. Now at Ace, they have a full line of Echo products, trimmers starting at $159, blowers at $159, chainsaws starting at $199, all with a five-year warranty. They also offer the Red Max line of commercial trimmers and blowers. Ace has more parts for most makes and models. Also at Ace, you can pick up batteries, belts, and blades. And as always, Ace provides pickup and delivery service. That's Ace Equipment sales and service in the Park Lane Plaza in Rutherfordton or call them at 286-9781. High school football Friday night, AM 590 WCKB, Jay Coombs, Cliff Wall, Mary, Thomas Jefferson out to a 20 to nothing lead over Highland Tech. We start quarter number two. McMullins and oh, hit off his hands incomplete. Again, a pass attempt up the field. It looks like we're going to see the first T.J. punt. That might be the first T.J. punt we've seen in a while. Yeah, facing fourth and nine. Griffins are going to punt it. Talk about an interesting score. It's in the college game tonight. Syracuse jumping out to a 14-7 to lead over Clemson. Up the road in Belmont, it is all Red Raiders. 21 to nothing. South Point over East Rutherford. Sandra Bell's punt, and it looks like it's going to end up in pretty good field position. That I believe TJ got the ball back. He, it looks like it may have touched. TJ comes I up think, with it. I think the Griffins have recovered here. So it looks like the punt must have hit one of the Rams players. It bounced off the ground, and it went to his chest, like I said earlier about it being over your head and you not knowing it's there. Yeah, Nomi's back out there. So Wow, so the Griffins are going to end up here with great field position. Any idea where the yard marker is here? It's first and ten for the Griffins, and here's Miller out. Allen cuts off to the far side, turns right corner. And looks, looks like he picked up maybe a yard, so... Not a big game. But, well, no, now they're moving ahead. So let's see if they. Looks like a gain of two for Miller out. Second and ten for the Griffins. Here's McMullen handing off this time to Bill Lay, and Lay is going to take it. Yeah, they're going to get him for a horse collar, but great play by Miller, uh, by Lay. Bill, Bill Lay. Right as he was going in, the end zone, the, the, ball, the defender jerked him down by his horse collar. And, or his collar. Yep. His personal foul. They're going to call it a face mask against Highland Tech. That was brutal. I don't, like, Lay actually came out, and he's standing on the sideline walking towards the bench right now. Probably going to give him a breather after that one. First and go for the Griffins. Cannot see exactly where they are. Tell from the sideline over here. At this angle, you can't tell if it's the one or the three. Well, I think it's about the three. Oh. And there's Bill Lay in there, and looks like it's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, right before they snap the ball, right before they broke the huddle, they run him back out there. I guess he, he's like, look, we don't need you to breathe. 10.40 to go in the second quarter, and Bill Lay has his fourth touchdown of the night. And we're going to call that a three-yarder. They're going for two. And they missed that point after, so McMullen's trying to go for the corner, and it is intercepted in the end zone. Now, the play is dead at that point. You cannot bring it out. So the two-point try fails. But Bill Lay has collected his fourth touchdown of the evening. This one, a three-yard touchdown run. 10.40 to go. Second quarter, it's now Griffin's 26. Highland Tech nothing. This is high school football Friday night. Fountain Electrical Services has been providing quality electrical installation and maintenance since 1946. Quality work includes outdoor lighting, fuse box upgrades, ceiling fans, generators, 
motion sensors, and so much more. If it's an electrical need, Fountain Services can do it. You can always expect a high-level quality of service, dependability, and availability you have come to expect from Fountain Electric Services. Call 287-9978 or check the website at FountainServices.com. High School Football Friday Night, Foothills Mo Sports, AM 590 WCAB, broadcasting live via Verizon Wireless, Mighty 590 WCAB, Rutherfordton. Just a couple of minutes now past 8 o'clock. Griffin's leading Highland Tech, 26 to nothing. Four Bill Lay rushing touchdowns. Now, Sandra Bell's kick, Baldwin Lay's fourth touchdown of the evening. This one being returned by the Brandons coming up the near side of the field on the return. It looks like he's brought it out to about the 30-yard line. Score in Belmont is getting out of hand for the East Rutherford Cavaliers. It is now 28 to nothing. They are in the second quarter of play. In fact, just got started with the second quarter. South Point leads East 28 zip. Hmm. First and 10 here for Highland Tech. Quarterback Martin, belting out the signal count, takes the shotgun snap. Now firing a rifle over the far side of the field. Goes sailing over the head of his intended receiver, incomplete. Yeah, they're running the ball very well, and they've decided to start throwing it right here. So. Uh, Highland Tech is, you know, they they do pretty good on the run up the middle. Earlier they had a couple breakaways for, you know, three four yards, uh, but the, with the score being as, you know, out of reach as it is, they feel like they have to throw it. Second and ten for the Rams. Oh, whistles blow prior to the snap. Illegal procedure. It's the Rams that back them up five. It'll be second and 15 for Highland Tech. <laughs> TJ doing everything out here tonight. They even, they're even picking up the flags for the referees. Hmm, second and 15. And Big, now. Right, looks like uh, number 70 for TJ getting in the backfield. I think it was 70. Yeah, uh, Beaver, Tyson. Tyson Beaver. It's only a junior. Junior, 5'11", 300 pounds. He got in the backfield and just... Uh, talk about taking somebody to Suplex City. That's what he did. So another loss on the play. Let's see now if I can tell from the sideline. It's third and long, long, long for the Rams. Martin is going to take this snap himself. He cuts out to the left now, trying to cut back in toward the middle, and that by several Griffin defenders. Let's see where the spot is. Got back a lot of yardage, but still going to leave the Rams short. Looks like by about three yards. Uh, actually, it's 13 yards. It's, uh... Oh, yeah, my bad. Well, you are right. Now I see both. Both markers over there. I have a first here in a minute when you uh, it's like the. This is going to be a punt, and this one goes sky high and takes a bit of a Griffin's bounce after it hits the turf, and looks like it is going to be on the Rams' end of the field, probably about the 45-yard line. So this is the first that I've ever seen this happen. You got Coach Phil Cole on top of the press box, and you got Noemi McMullins back here re- returning this punt. Phil Cole yells down to Noemi McMullins, hey, let's do this. Noemi turns around and communicated right back to him. That's how close the press box is to the field. He just turned around and communicated right back. He heard him like clear as day. First and ten, Griffiths. Here's McMullins. Fires a pass right up the middle of the field. It goes sailing a little bit too long, incomplete. You know, I get back into the running game and just – Pound it until the game's over with. This is number 88, the intended target for the Griffins. That'd be Spencer Watts. I have a feeling we may see some 
players enter the game tonight that haven't called their numbers a lot this season. Here's a handoff to Bill Lay. Lay from left to right. Still working. And Bill Lay, even with defenders on him, carries them for a couple of more yards up the field. So you pick up about five. So that will bring up a third and five for the Griffins. Snap to McMullins. Rose over to his right now, cuts back opposite direction. Uh, I think maybe trying for a slant pattern there. and looked like he was trying to go for number six of the Griffins. I don't have a six. That was a screen pass, actually. That's why everybody got in the back, and Miller Allen was open. But because oh, we were talking about the beefy line by the defense, he had to throw it higher than he expected to. And that brings a fourth down at Looks like here the Griffins will go for it. For you Clemson fans out there, Clemson just now tied it. 14 to 14. Oh, got a game with Syracuse. Fourth down. Going to go for it. McMullins is going to keep it himself. Has a big opening over on the left side, and he is going to have the first down plus a whole lot more yardage. Tell me McMullins on fourth and five. He has taken it up to the 20-yard line. I love to watch Nomi run the ball. He he has a great pause where he runs the ball quick one way, and he, it's almost like it's a pause, and then he shifts back the other way, and it, it shakes a lot of people out of their shoes. It will be first and 10. Looks like the ball may be at the 19-yard line. It will be first and 10 for the Griffins. This is McMullen's quick handoff. That's Miller out. Alton breaks her on the right side, finds a big hole. I think it's all the way down to the one-yard line. If so, that would be a gain of about 18 on that carry from Alton. Oh, I can't tell. <laughs> it's hard because it, when the referee was standing up close to the line, it looked like he was standing right next to the pylon. Okay, it is second and very short, and it looks like just inside the 10-yard line. Uh oh, whistles blow prior to the snap. Indication here. Illegal substitution by the defense. So Highland Tech with the penalty. That will result in a Griffin's first down. It'll be first and goal just inside the five. Griffin's trying to add to their lead here. First and goal just inside the five. Handoff is to Alton. Alton works here on the right side. And picked up a bit of yardage. Trying to see if we can tell how close he is now. Looks like he's at three. Okay. Second and goal from the three. Griffin's leading it 26 to nothing. Trying to push it to 32 nothing here. And here's Miller out, and Matt out should be in for the touchdown. He is. Touchdown Miller out, his first of the night. It's a three yard touchdown run. It's going to put the Griffins up 32 to nothing here in the second quarter. Looks like they're going for two again. Well, they have not had many opportunities this season to actually get in a lot of reps for the two-point try, so maybe that's part of the plan here is try to see if they can do it. And this time around, there's a handoff. And, and he's tackled short of the end zone, and I couldn't tell who that was on the handoff. So here's the story. 6.26 to go in the second quarter of play. And now Miller out. Collects a touchdown, three-yarder. Two-point try fails. 
but the Griffins still lead. 32, Highland Tech, nothing. High school football, Friday night. The R.H. Law Firm and attorneys Gerald N. Willis, Kent Baldwin, and Martin Sherrard offer years of experience and expertise to provide a wide range of legal services from real estate closings, Medicaid planning, asset protection, and probate to litigation of any description. Call 287-3338 for a consultation or visit them at 120 East Court Street in Rutherfordton. Gerald, Kent, Martin, and their staff stand ready to go to work for you. High school football Friday night, AM 590 WCAB, Griffins leading Highland Tech 32 to nothing. And now Xander Bell with his kick following Miller out his three-yard touchdown run. This one goes sailing all the way back to the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Let's see if I can get some quick score updates here. Haven't had time to deal with the technology with all the scoring going on here. 17 minutes ago, the Daily Courier posted that Shelby leads RS 17 to nothing with 3 minutes and 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Oh, my. That was 17 minutes ago, so. It is first and 10 for the Rams. starting from their 20-yard line. Quarterback Martin is going to keep it. He does find a gaping hole over here on the near side, the right side. And Miller out with a nice run. Best run of the night for the Rams. It looks like he has brought it out to the 37-yard line. Yeah, that was number eight, Caleb, Caleb Hill for Holland Tech. Picks up the first down. I noticed they've changed quarterbacks. Oh, that's what it is. Yes. It's now Hill. Hill has moved to quarterback. Oh. And now there is a whistle prior to the snap. The motion. Or the legal motion. procedure against the Rams. They just had a good run by their quarterback just to have it taken back by Bellamy. Thirty-five to nothing. South Point now leading East Rutherford. My hands are getting tired. <laughs> no. Now the snap. Here's a pass attempt, and wow. it is caught. Nice reception, and breaks it up almost to midfield. Stopped up at about the forty-eight. That's Gavin Davis, number twenty-one. He's a senior, six foot tall, one hundred forty-five pounds. First and ten for Highland Tech, their best offensive drive of the night so far. They're at their 48-yard line. Shotgun snap, quarterback Caleb Hill, handoff. And working through on that left side up to the 50, maybe just across the 50. Trying to look to see if I can get uh, any more other... Updates. So it was 35 to 0, uh, top point? Yep. And now, bringing it to the near sideline, chase down out of bounds. No gain on the play for the Rams. They just threw a flag uh, after the play, and I, I don't know what's going to be the call here. Could be a late hit. Out of bounds, but wait to see. Now, it came out like, extremely late, though. Like, they just now threw it. Play's been dead. And we'll get the indication from our referee. Is this personal foul? Huh? Personal foul and sportsmanlike. Gets Griffins. That's usually not like them. Uh, I can, you can hear Coach Cash up here talking above us. He's not happy about it, neither is Coach Cole. That brought the uh, the Highland Tech fans alive a little bit. Yeah, to bring some Rams up to the Griffins' 37-yard line. First down 
first and ten for the Rams. Deep pass attempt right down the middle of the field, batted around, and it falls to the turf incomplete. Great coverage there by the Griffins, number 12. That's uh, Sam Sam Caffell. Got in a good position and just swatted the ball away. Only a sophomore doing a good job on defense. Second and ten for the Rams down. The ball comes back out to the Griffins, 37. Shotgun snap, Caleb Hill, quarterback, keeping it, cuts out to the left side, and he is going to be dropped as he tried to move out to the left side, out to the far side of the field, and dropped for no gain on the play. This is going to bring up third and ten. Josh Mellon read that perfectly. He the defensive tackle, got his hands on him, and just threw him to the ground. So, big third down here for the Rams. See if the Griffins' defense can put a stop to the drive. Big pass to Tempo. Oh, it was caught! Down at about the 16-yard line. That is an incredible catch. It's Kobe Christian for Holland Tech. Uh, you can hear the coaches yelling, get on the inside. We're in man coverage. Get on the inside. And, and uh, Petty did not adjust, and that's the cause of it. So, Caleb Hill doing a great job on that pass. They've switched quarterbacks again. Now just they're first, great. first and ten for the Rams. And, oh, Martin, the quarterback this time around, he is run down for a loss on the play. Looks like he has stopped back at about the 18-yard line. They, uh, another put, another put Martin back in now, and... They're rotating kind of like what East did last year. Martin's in there now. Trying that every other play, alternating quarterbacks. Second and 12 for the Rams. Here's snap. Here's the quarterback rolling out to the near side. He is going to be brought down for a lot. Heavily flags come in late. They're going to get uh, number 55 for TJ which is Josh Mellon, he, when he took the quarterback down, he kind of grabbed him by the back of the helmet and drug him down to the ground. Personal foul, face mask against Thomas Jefferson. So it'll be 15 yards. And that's, that's, been, the, that's been the going thing for this, this drive. The penalties has helped the Rams down the field. This is the best position they've been in all night long. And they're in scoring position right here. So I'm, I'm going to send the heat. I'm going to send the heat right now. I'm going to send my best blitzing linebacker and tell him to go to the quarterback. So let's see if this has put the ball up at about the 10-yard line. Here's a snap. Rams quarterback, and there's Caleb Hill. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. I think that's about it. They have lost just a little bit. That was a, a little option play, and it's, it's wild. Now they've got both their starting and backup quarterback in, and so I'm wondering if they're going to run that option here in a minute and throw it. Okay, Rams threatening here. Snap to the quarterback. He's going to keep it now. Uh-oh. Under some pressure, he's going to have to get rid of this, and it is picked off. And this is Max Robbins coming back up the near sideline and knocked out of bounds right in front of us. Hmm. Nice job by Robbins on the INT. Max just planted his feet and, and uh, had a jump ball with another with the, uh, the offensive player, and of course he came down with it. Shay up the road in Belmont, five minutes to go in the second quarter. South Point leading 41 to nothing over East Rutherford. Chris Clark says even the South Point band is really, really good. First attempt for the Griffins following Max Robbins' INT. Handoff goes to Bill Lay. 
place, working that right side, still on his feet. Helmet comes out, flags come flying, and it looks like Bill Lay is up to about the 28-yard line, but let's see what all the penalties are going to be. If they call this correctly, Bill, Bill lost his helmet, so he's got to come out, but before he could get up, the Highland Tech defender grabbed him by his leg and drug him back three yards after the play was over. Okay, let's see what the call is going to be from our referee. Personal foul against Highland Tech. That'll be a 15-yard penalty against Rams. A minute 50 to go here in the second quarter. T.J. out in front, 32 to nothing. I don't know if Bill A would be one I'd want to make mad. I mean, he's he's hitting you with his body, and he enjoys hitting you with his body. Do you think he would stop if you made him mad? I don't think so. It would be like running into a nest of yellow jackets. Now the snap, McMullen's had to go Miller out, and Allen takes it from left to right, and moves ahead. Little yardage gained, let's say maybe a yard. Put the ball down at the Griffin's 44-yard line. Now, Bill Lay's back in right now, and I'm, I'm wondering if he's a little ticked off about that penalty. Uh, earlier, and he might plant somebody this time. Second and nine for TJ. From the 44, here's the snap, McMullins. McMullins taking it himself, trying to cut out to the far side, turns the right corner, picks up a little bit of yardage. Do you have it about the six, I believe. Third and, uh, I'm going to call this six, third and six to go for the Griffins. Once again, apologize for the spotting tonight, but we are at field level. This is tough. I don't like this vantage point. And now timeout, take him. Timeout, take him by Highland Tech. So with 33 seconds to go in the second quarter, timeout, Rams. TJ leads it 32 to nothing. This is high school football Friday night. I know what I want from my energy company. I want to know that my power is always on and that my energy is cleaner, safer, and affordable. That's why as a Duke Energy lineman, I'm working hard to make that possible. I feel honored to serve our community. It's a good feeling knowing that I'm helping to build a smarter, reliable energy future for all of us, for my family, and for yours. Paid for by Duke Energy Shareholder. High School Football Friday night, AM 590 WCAB. One minute to go before the half, Shelby leading RS Central 31 to nothing. As we mentioned, South Point leading East Rutherford 41 to nothing. Chase and East Gaston have made it to halftime. Scoreless. Now, Griffins. Facing third and about six. McMullins for a pass. Tip is caught. And now taking off over here on the near side is Bill Lay. And Bill Lay picks up the Griffins first down. And it looks like he is taking it up inside the 40. They, they couldn't have set that screen up any prettier. And of course, Tom Jefferson just called the timeout. That screen was was a beautiful setup. My phone is absolutely exploding tonight. These scores are coming in so fast. It's hard to believe. It's hard to keep up with all, all the action here. Unfortunately for Rutherford County, uh, these two where the scores are just coming in, they're, they're not very good for us. All the points are being scored by our opponents. So 31 to nothing, Shelby leading the Central Hilltoppers, a minute to go before the half. And down the road in Belmont, 41 to nothing, South Point leading East in the second quarter. And halftime at East Gaston, Chase and East Gaston scoreless at the half. Here, it's 32 to nothing in favor of the Griffins, who are trying to improve to 8 and 0, and on their way to doing that. Here this evening, I got Hunter Huss is up fourteen to seven 
over Chris tonight. Oh. That would be a big upset. It is first and ten for the Griffins. McMullins ready for a shotgun snap. Rolls back a couple of steps. Now looking for a pass step. Deep down over the middle field. It is caught. Max Robbins. That is number eight, Max Robbins. Wow. And that's where I'm used to seeing number eight. Used to call a Max's name on the receiving end of the pass from Nomi McMullins. I cannot tell at all where the ball is. It is first and ten for the Griffins. And McMullins this time around. Touchdown. I didn't even see the play. <laughs> Any idea, what, any idea who got it, what happened? No, but I can find out. Watch this. <laughs> it was Max Roberts on the score again. Okay. That's the cool thing about having this. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see it, but get up the stairs a little bit. I guess you get a better vantage point. Once again, they'll try to go for a two-point conversion. It's Max Roberts gets the touchdown now. This one being batted down in the end zone and once again, the two point not working. But with eight seconds to go in the second quarter, it is now TJ 38, Highland Tech nothing. This is high school football Friday night. After a hearty meal at Fat Trace's Barbecue, it's not uncommon to hear folks say, Mmm, that's good. That's because it is good. If you have had a plate of Fat Trace's Barbecue with the trimmings, then you will agree with me. If you haven't eaten a meal at Fat Trace's, just don't say a word until you have done so. If you need to eat and greet, there's a private meeting room. Check out the daily specials, too. Make this a Fat Trace's Barbecue weekend and try the mouth-watering ribs. 135 West Main Street, Spindale. Okay, so Max Robbins, the receiving end of the pass from Nomi McMullins, puts his name down in the scoring column. Griffin's now leading 38 to nothing. We have eight seconds left before halftime. Now the kick. This is a low corn burner. Going to be trying to be scooped up by the Rams, having trouble. Now picking up, trying to return it up the middle of the field. It uh, looks like may have brought it out to the 32 on the return. Getting a little bit of steady drizzle coming down. That's a little bit on and off here in the first two quarters. Oh, and that's again. Oh, yeah, it's half time. It's half time. Wow. I'm completely out of the loop tonight. This this is too awkward in the place where we're set up, and eh, this is this is just unique. So it's half time here in Gastonia, and at the half, it is all Griffins. Thomas Jefferson, 38. Highland Tech, nothing. Stay tuned now for the halftime show. We'll be back momentarily here on High School Football Friday night. Market declines, unemployment, political uncertainty, oil prices. Today's headlines can be very scary. Hi, this is Andrew Tisdale, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, and I'm here to work with you to help you understand the impact of these short-term events and how to be positioned for the long term. We provide the tools for a logical, reasoned, disciplined approach to investing. Don't let these headlines derail your long-term financial strategy. Come and stop by our office to set a face-to-face -face appointment for the straight talk. We're at 173 Railroad Avenue in the Food Line Plaza. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Mark your calendar for Saturday and Sunday, October 21st and 22nd for the annual gun show sponsored by the American Legion Post 74 at the Old Green Hill School 
Highway 6474 in Rutherford. They're going to be giving away a Marlin Bolt Action 22 Magnum rifle. Mention this ad and get an extra entry. Admission is $5 and children under 12 will be admitted free. Follow them on Facebook at American Legion 74-NC. It's the best little gun show in Western North Carolina. Saturday and Sunday, October 21st and 22nd. If you need some more information, phone them at 395-2223. Tri-City Tire Service, located at the corner of 64 and Railroad Avenue in Ruth, is your reliable and affordable tire and auto service center. You can always depend on their professional staff for honest work on brakes, tires, alignments, and more. Tri-City Tire also carries sand, mulch, gravel, and dirt, and they are now a certified U-Haul dealership. See them today on the corner of 64 and Railroad Avenue in Ruth, or give them a call, 287-8778. Tri-City Tire Service keeps you rolling at affordable prices. High School Football Friday Night, AM 590 WCAB. We are broadcasting live via Verizon Wireless in Gastonia to the Highland School of Technology, home of the Highland Tech Rams. It's halftime, and at the half, it is all Griffins. Thomas Jefferson jumping out to a 38 to nothing lead over the Rams here at the half. Let's go back and recap the scoring for the Griffins here in the first two quarters of play tonight in Gastonia. Bill Lay would collect four rushing touchdowns in the first half. His first came with 10-11 to go in the opening quarter. A 16-yard touchdown run. Sander Bell came on. His point after kick good. Griffins jumped out 7 to nothing. Then Bill Lay would hit again. This time a 1-yard touchdown run with 4.44 to go in the opening quarter. Bell's point after kick good. Griffins up 14 to nothing. Then with a minute 35 to go in the opening quarter, Bill Lay his third rushing touchdown of the first half. This one, a 19-yard touchdown run. Uh, point after, though, was no good. A bad snap, and ball got away from the Griffins. But at the end of the first quarter, they held on to a 20 to nothing lead over Highland Tech. And then with 10.40 to go in the second quarter, Bill Lay, his fourth rushing touchdown of the first half. This one, a three-yard run. Uh, tried to go for a two-point conversion. That failed. Griffin's up, though, 26 to nothing. Miller Alton would put his name in the scoring column with 6.26 to go in the second quarter. He had a three-yard touchdown run. Griffin's tried for a two-point conversion again. That failed. But they led 32 to nothing. And then it was Max Robbins on the receiving end of the touchdown pass completion from quarterback Nomi McMullins. With eight seconds to go in the second quarter, Griffin's try again to go for a two-point conversion. That failed, but it brings them to a 38 to nothing lead over Highland Tech here at halftime. Fans, you'll want to be sure to stay tuned for the fifth quarter tonight. That is our postgame show here on the radio broadcast. One of our, our one of our Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy Griffins players will be awarded this week the honor of being the AM590 WCAB McDonald Player of the Game. That player will be receiving a beautiful plaque courtesy of Chris Carlisle at KC Lancaster's in Rutherford County. Fans will remember, whenever you have a need for trophies, plaques, other forms of recognition, do business locally. And consider doing business with Christy Carlisle at KC Lancasters. You can contact Christy via email at kc.lancasters at aol.com. That's kc.lancasters at aol.com. Or you can call Christy at 305 4811. Fans to honor someone with style. Remember to make it an honor from Christy Carlisle at KC Lancasters. Taking a quick look ahead to the sports calendar for this weekend, we only have one football game on tap. Of course, 
Carolina Panthers already played this weekend. Uh, that Thursday night game with Philadelphia last night. A lot of us still cringing over that one. 28-23 loss for the Panthers against the Eagles. Tomorrow afternoon is our only sporting action of the weekend on the radio. That'll be college football action. University of North Carolina Tar Heels up against the Cavaliers from Virginia. That uh, countdown to kickoff, pregame, 1-30. Means it should be a 3:30 kickoff tomorrow afternoon between the Tar Heels and Virginia. High school football Friday night is being brought to you in part this season by our good friends at McDonald's. Three locations in Rutherford County. Also, our thanks to Tri City Tire, the United Way of Rutherford County, and Fountain Electric. Just a few of the many sponsors who make our weekly broadcast possible here on AM590, Northland Communications, Cable Television Channel 5, and streaming to a worldwide audience via the Internet, WCABfootball.com. Our Internet web streaming service is provided by Bill Teal of Signature Web Designs. Halftime in Gastonia. And the Griffins trying to improve to 8 and 0. First time in 25 years that a Rutherford County team can claim that honor of being 8 and 0. The Griffins are off to a good start here tonight at Highland Tech, leading at the half by a score of 38 to nothing. You're listening to the Halftime Show. Here's what our customers think about McCurry Deck Chevrolet Buick GMC. I love my McCurry Deck Buick. I love my McCurry Deck Chevrolet. We We love love our our McCurry Deck Deck GMC. GMC. We guarantee you'll love McCurry Deck Chevrolet Buick GMC for a city. I am definitely a McCurry Deck customer for life. I love the price and the McCurry Deck Customer for Life Rewards Program. It gives you up to $3,000 or more in rewards. Take the easy drive to savings. McCurry Deck for a city. Discover the rewards of being a customer for life. Here's some great deals for you at drop-in. Need a six-pack of soda to pop in the fridge? All six-pack Coke products, only $1.99. Pick up a 15-pack of Coke products, only $3.99. Or three Pepsi Mountain Dew, two liters, $3. Here's two great back-to-school specials going on now until Halloween. Try a delicious liver mush biscuit for only 99 cents. Get any single topping pizza, only $5.99 after 3 o'clock every day. Hot delicious Hunt Brothers pizza covered with cheese and topping. Your choice, $5.99. Congratulations to Jessica Quinn, winner of the $100 Hide the Rock contest on Drop In. Visit your friends at Ace Equipment Sales and Service in the Park Lane Plaza for all your lawn and garden equipment needs. Now at Ace, they have a full line of Echo products, trimmers starting at $159, blowers at $159, chainsaws starting at $199, all with a five-year warranty. They also offer the Red Max line of commercial trimmers and blowers. Ace has more parts for most makes and models. Also at Ace, you can pick up batteries, belts, and blades. And as always, Ace provides pickup and delivery service. That's Ace Equipment Sales sales and service in the Park Lane Plaza in Rutherfordton or call them at 286-9781. 24 hours, 7 days a week, you can pick up your favorite programs on AM59 and on Northland Cable Channel 5. (laughs) Jacob Conley has just pointed out something very interesting to me. We we had no idea why the Griffins were trying to continue to go for a two-point conversion. Uh, now we have our answer as far as it's not that they are trying to uh, practice on trying to get a two-point conversion, uh, but there's uh, <laughs> if the kick goes into the woods at that end of the field, the kicking team's coaches have to go try to find and retrieve the football. So because of going to that end of the field, uh, if if the kick goes sailing through the uprights, it could go into the woods, and the only way to uh, be able to get the ball back is for one of the CJ coaches uh, go into the woods and try to uh, find it and retrieve it. So that answers the question as far as why the Griffins have continually tried to go for uh, two-point conversions. 
I can remember a couple of years ago in Avondale at Griffin Stadium. And I believe it was Polk County that the Griffins were facing. Uh, coach got upset because they didn't have anybody to retrieve the balls at the one end of the stadium. And uh, he uh, continually went for two-point conversions because he uh, said we can't afford to lose any of our footballs. Uh, let's see, quick uh, updates here. Uh, I think I mentioned that at the half, Shelby is leading RS Central by a score of 31 to nothing. Kevin Carver uh, informs me that Shelby has a total of 329 yards offense in the first two quarters compared with Central's 19 yards. So 329 yards for Shelby, only 19 yards for the Hilltoppers in the first two quarters of play in Shelby. You, you missed out on but we found out now why the Griffins are trying to go for two. At this end of the field, there, there's no way. If the ball goes sailing through the upright, it ends up in the woods. Oh, okay. and There's nobody there to retrieve it. So one of the coaches from TJ would have to go into the woods and try to find and retrieve the football if they kick in that direction. Jamie Hicks can go. <laughs> I would yeah. love to see him scale the fence and go into the woods and get that ball. What is the old Charlie Daniel song? Uh, uh, late in the night, head into the woods. Uh, I think it's called The Legend of uh, Boogie Swamp or something. Boogie Swamp, something like that. Hey, I was, as I was uh, walking, she noticed in the corner, I thought it was just on the side still, but if you look, there's a slope on each end of the end zone. Yep. And, uh, I heard I heard some of the coaches talking about, you know, they, they tell their players, you know, try to, like Max Ross when he had the interception, they were like, we were, we were afraid he was going to step on that slant. I heard him tell them. Oh, so, he could have, he could have, yeah. So it's almost like if you're going into the end zone, maybe you ought to almost consider sliding into the end zone. Keep everything in the middle, and that's why they haven't taken, you were talking about that, that's why they haven't taken anything to the outside in the end zone. It's always been inside. Because they're afraid that they might get hurt. This is a unique stadium, to say the least, here at Island Tech. It is the first time I can ever remember in all these years that we actually are broadcasting from the sidelines. So we are at field level, and we are down at the right side of the field at about the 27-yard line. And that's why we've had a lot of trouble tonight uh, with the spots, because it's hard when you're at ground level. Uh, to see exactly how far up the field the teams are. So both teams now coming back out onto the playing field and momentarily we'll be getting ready for the third quarter. Remember that Highland Tech won the coin toss. They deferred their option to the beginning of the third quarter. Uh, my guess is trailing 38 to nothing. They'll probably want the football uh, to start the uh, third quarter. Right. Back momentarily. High School Football, Friday night. Mark your calendar for Saturday and Sunday, October 21st and 22nd for the annual gun show sponsored by the American Legion Post 74 at the Old Green Hill School, Highway 6474 in Rutherford. They're going to be giving away a Marlin Bolt Action 22 Magnum rifle. Mention this ad and get an extra entry. Admission is $5 and children under 12 will be admitted free. Follow them on Facebook at American Legion 74-NC. It's the best little gun show in western North Carolina. Saturday and Sunday, October 21st and 22nd. If you need some more information, phone them at 395-2223. Man, this is not what I expected to see at this party. Yeah, I know. I want to hang out and have a good time, but I'm not cool with the drinking. This isn't going to end well. I want a boat, but look at Jimmy. He's supposed to be our ride. I'm not getting in a car with him. He should not be driving. Or drinking. Look, my parents talk about this stuff all the time. We have a deal. I can call them any time I need a safe ride home. No questions asked unless someone's in danger. What do you say? Yeah, call your folks, and maybe they can make sure Jimmy's okay. We need to make sure he's safe, too. Parents, United Way's Youth Council reminds you to talk with your kids about playing it smart and cool when they're out with friends. Talk with them about never getting into a car with an impaired driver, always finding a trusted adult to help, and taking care of themselves by not getting impaired, because it's cool for us kids to hang out together, but not at a funeral. 
For more information about Safe Road Safe Homes, call 2 and one or visit online at www.nc2and1.org. Hello, this is Dwayne Hunt with Insurance Services Associates. Are you on disability? Or maybe you're on Medicare? Or maybe both? Come see me, Dwayne Hunt, at Insurance Services Associates about a Medicare Advantage product brought to you by Humana. Please give me a call, 245-5301 at Insurance Services Associates, 127 East Trade Street, for a city. It hasn't been raining that hard. Talking about the fact that it seems like the drizzle has stopped here in Gastonia. We had kind of a light mist, light drizzle throughout most of the first two quarters. But now here at halftime, uh, feels like it, it has stopped. So maybe that will change the playing conditions as well on the field. Because football did see a bit, seem a bit slippery. Uh, especially at the beginning of the game. So maybe now we can kind of dry things up a little bit. 38 to nothing. Thomas Jefferson shutting out the Highland Sex and Rams to get the opening kick to start the third quarter. And of course, one thing that the Rams certainly want to do is not only put some points on the scoreboard, but they really would like to prevent themselves from getting into a situation with the running clock. Keep in mind, 40 points are needed, 40 points difference for the running clock rule to take effect. So both teams on the field, and momentarily we'll put the ball on the team. Get ready for the third quarter action here on High School Football Friday night. Once again, if you have not heard, the news is not good for our other Rutherford County teams tonight. 31 to nothing. Shelby leading Central at the half. 41 to nothing. South Point over East Rutherford at the half. I guess we could say there is a, a light of encouragement. Chase and East Gaston scoreless at the half of the road at East Gaston. And the Griffin Sears 38 to nothing over the Rams. Trying to improve to 8 and 0 tonight. First time in Rutherford County in 25 years. We've had a high school football team go 8 and 0. The ball is on the tee. We're getting ready for the third quarter kick. As soon as our officials get set, as soon as they blow the whistle, we will be ready to get back to football action. Sander Bell. Here's his kick. It's a boomer. But it hits the chest and then picked up by one of the Rams players on the return. Getting out to the far side of the field. Lightning speed down that far side. Wow, quite a hit. No, that was a great run, but no even ball. Oh, oh a light the flag. Noe McMullen's just drilled number three for Highland Tech. That's Jeremiah Wallace. Drilled him, and, oh, my gosh, that was a beautiful hit. You don't expect a quarterback a quarterback to make that kind of hit. It looks like he was hit out of bounds over there at about the 40-yard line. But now let's wait to see what the late flag. Probably be an unsportsmanlike or a personal foul. I'm wondering if Noe got up talking a little trash. It is going to be a personal foul charged against Island. Highland Tech. And if they ejected the player. So a player ejection here. I don't know which one they're they're, they're telling us now. East Gaston strikes first, but fails a two-point conversion. East Gaston of 6-0. Just got the tweet. And we we'll wait here to find out what if... Okay. All right. I guess he's wanting to see what happened. Why do you find out if anybody has any video of that play? 
Okay, so we can sit down over here, and here's the, or actually this is first down of the offensive series, and it starts from their 42. And it looks like on this carry, maybe picked up a couple of yards. I don't know who's ejected. I haven't seen anybody leave. No, I never saw anybody come off the field. Second down now for the Rams. Caleb Lee, a quarterback, this time he's going to keep it. He drives straight ahead, twisting, darting. Stop just short of midfield. Up at the Rams, 48. Nice run there by Caleb Hill. to bring it up third and five. Hill, shotgun snap, oh, drops the football. Now under heavy pressure, lunches past step right at the end, goes sailing out of bounds, incomplete. And probably a wise decision to simply try to get, get rid of the football. And it will bring up fourth down for Highland Tech. Of course, Highland Tech looks like they're going to go for it. They're in a position where they really have nothing to lose by going for it. Right up close to midfield. Hill, shotgun snap, keeps it himself, rolls out to the right. Ooh, right into three Griffin defenders. Yikes. Naomi McMullen's played that option just perfectly. He... He looked like he was going to take the uh, the option route, and then right he kind of walled off the quarterback and lunged at him and took him out. You're listening to High School Football Friday Night on the Foothills Most Sports, AM 590 WCAB Rutherford set just a couple of minutes before 9 o'clock. 38 to nothing. Thomas Jefferson over Highland Tech. Now the Griffins take over first and 10. Here's a snap and whistles blow. Play is whistled dead. Let's see what the call is. Could be an illegal procedure on the part of TJ. It is. Yep. Illegal procedure on the Griffins. Back about five yards. I believe it's down I over. It'll be first and 15. I believe. Uh that's only going to be like the first or second penalty that uh, TJ's had tonight. Now the snap of first and 15. And look at this big hole opening up for Bill Lay. Is that Lay or is that out? Well, I'm looking now. That's Miller out. Yeah. Number five for the Griffins over on the far side of the field. Brings it all the way up to the Highland Tech 43. Trojans respond with a big return, drives it for TD. We get a better. Really? Yeah, that's what it just said. I just got the update. I'm trying to find out for sure. And now, here's a leg pitch. And driving over the far side of the field, picking up the first down, takes it up to the Rams 35. Yeah, drove, drove in with a TD. Extra point, no good, so it's 6 to 6. How about that? They're still deadlocked. <laughs> both teams one and six overall. They're both 0 and one in the conference race. Jason East Cass and somebody needs to win that. First and ten. Here's McMullen's handing off this time around. And again, yeah, that is Miller Outen on the carry. And Outen picks up it looks like eleven yards. Brings it up to the 26-yard line. Yeah, he's about a yard. He's, he's right at a yard short right now. Okay, so a nine-yard picked up, a yard short. And now over on the far side, picking up the first down, and plus about four yards. Takes it up to the 22-yard line. Highland Tech got away with one right here. They had a player, too many men on the field, and he not only... Was there too many men, but he was 
as he was coming off the field right in front of the official. He was across the line before the ball snapped, and they didn't throw a flag. I guess they felt like we'll let him buy with that one. First and ten, Griffiths from the 21. McMullen's on the move. Pass is caught by Miller Alton. Alton quickly dropped out of bounds. Very short yardage gained. Looks like Miller maybe maybe a yard is always going to get out of that. What's crazy is when he gets tackled, he slid up onto the bank over here. And, of course, Coach Cole giving Miller out and down the road talking about, you know, let's quit jogging. Okay, the ball is at the 18-yard line, so a pick up a three. And now the handoff here, Miller out. Out takes it across the 10. That's Kate Cody Maxwell, number 15. Oh, 15 is Maxwell. That's the first time we've called his name uh, tonight. He is only a sophomore. And it looks like he is up to about the 8, so it'll be first and goal for the Griffins. A chance here to go past a 40-point spread. First and go at the eight. Here's the stamping bullets. And got Maxwell. Maxwell driving, driving. And Maxwell is up to at least the five, maybe just inside the five. Maxwell's grandmother, when we're away from DJ, Maxwell's grandmother is the one that gives me our updates to DJ. Oh, yeah. But it's him just a sophomore, the way he runs the ball, he kind of gives you a glimpse of the future of TJ. Looks good. Second to go. Here's Maxwell again, and this time around he is going to go all the way to the building, and it's a touchdown for Maxwell. Cody Maxwell. That may be his first touchdown of the year. Sophomore contributing. Five-yard touchdown run from Maxwell. See. Okay, at this end of the field, the Griffins will try for the kick point after. So Xander Bell, Bill Lay to hold. Here's the place, here's the boot, and it is good. <laughs> so with 7.36 to go in the third quarter, it is now Griffins 45, Highland Tech nothing. You're listening to High School Football Friday night. Farmer's Friend Feed, Seed, and Supplies is your landscaping supplies and feed headquarters. They carry neutrino feeds, hay, compressed alfalfa hay, and more. Erosion control material is available at Farmer's Friend, dog collars, leases for dogs, and the popular black gold dog food and other brands your dog and cat will love. Check on the wild bird food mix. You'll love the product selection at Farmer's Friend, and you'll love the prices. Check them out, 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, 7.30 till 2. Their phone number is 287-3272. High School Football Friday night, AM 590, WSKB, Jay Coombs, off of Cliff Balmary, and the Griffins now with a 45 to nothing lead here at Gastonia over Highland Tech. Now we await the kick from Xander Bell following Cody Maxwell's touchdown run. Here's Bell's kick. He'll get his foot underneath this one. It goes sky high and it comes down. And caught here, returned by Martin. Martin takes off to the far side of the field and he is going to be dropped. Hit right at about the 25. And the Rams' offense will take over first and 10 from their own 25. TJ fans getting a little rowdy over there. I think there's some kids getting in that don't don't get too much playing time, and they're starting. They're coming out here and making some plays, and, of course, the fans are letting them enjoy their time out there. And I think we'll see more and more substitutions as we move along here in the second half. First and ten for the Rams. Uh-oh, high snap, but Hill brings it down. Now he's going to try a pass to Tim right up the middle field. He turns back to his top. Caught from behind, but all the way up to the Griffin's 20-yard line, it looks like. That's the six-foot-tall, 145-pound Gavin Davis. He's a senior for Highland Tech. That's, I think that's the second big pass he's caught tonight. 
That was a beautiful pass from quarterback Caleb Hill. Wow, they continue doing big plays like that. That's what they need. First and ten this time. Snap is a little bit high, and it is number 32 of the Griffins who's going to collect the sack. That is Thomas Hicks, a sophomore, with a sack. Quite a few yards lost here. Looks like about eight yards lost. Ball is pushed back out to about the 30-yard line, it looks like, from this viewpoint. Uh, TJ jumped off sides. Hey, that would give some of the lost yardage back. It is off sides. It's TJ. Move it up the field five yards. And it will make it second and 13. Yep, Hill has caught over here on the near side, and he gets away from the Griffins, and he's going to go into the end zone for the touchdown. That's number 21 again for Highland State. Like I said, Gavin Davis. So the goose egg is eliminated. And from about 25 yards out, quarterback Caleb Hill connects with number 21, Gavin Davis. And the Rams are on the scoreboard. It looks like at this end of the field, they also will try to go for a two-point conversion rather than kick the ball into the woods. High snap. Hill breaks down. Pass over into the corner of the end zone, busted up, incomplete. We have 4.58 to go in the third quarter. And our score is now Thomas Jefferson, 45, Highland Tech, 6. This is high school football, Friday night. Found Electrical Services has been providing quality electrical installation and maintenance since 1946. Quality work includes outdoor lighting, fuse box upgrades, ceiling fans, generators, motion sensors, and so much more. If it's an electrical need, Fountain Services can do it. You can always expect a high level quality of service, dependability, and availability you have come to expect from Fountain Electric Services. Call 287-9978 or check the website at fountainservices.com. High School Football Friday night here on AM 590 WCAB. 25-yard touchdown pass completion from the quarterback, Caleb Hill. Now I forgot the name again, number 21, no, Gavin, Gavin Davis. Yeah. Here's the kick following that Rams touchdown. And this one going to be picked up by the Griffins way over on the far side of the field, trying to return it. Up the far sideline. And we'll see how far up the field he came. Looks like maybe up to about the 20. Maybe the 25. Clock is running now here in the third quarter. Actually started running the clock with the Griffins at a 45-point lead. Now that Highland Tech has scored, that, of course, takes it back to a 39. But once you have a running clock, they do not... Stop it. So running clock means running for the duration of the contest. And now we have timeout taken by Highland Tech. That will stop the clock. 3.49 to go in the third quarter. Timeouts do stop the clock. And we'll hold it right here with TJ leading by a score of 45-6. to six. The second of the Griffins will improve to 8-0 and o overall. They will improve to 4 and 0 in the Southern Piedmont Conference race. They haven't heard anything about the other Southern Piedmont Conference games yet tonight. Uh, I know I'm pulling for a couple of big upsets. It'd be nice to see if we can put a blemish on the mark of Bessemer City, but probably not likely to happen. Uh, I just got an update from Chase. Chase at the end of the third is still six to six, but Chase is driving. They're at the East Gaston 21 yard line. 
All right, go Trojans. See if we can get them a win tonight on the road at East Gaston. First and ten for the Griffins. And breaking loose and coming up the field. Way over on the far side. Finally tackled up at about the 30, 35 yard line. Is that number 12 or number? I see a number 12. And number 12 for us is who? Sammy? Sam Capel. Capel, the sophomore. Well, it's good to see the young, the younger guys get in and get to get some playing time. In fact, he's going to be up about the forty, so about the forty-eight yard line. And now a first and ten, taking off with it, far side of the field. Again, that is Sam Cafell. He is the backup quarterback. That's why he's getting the ball because uh, they've got Nomi on the sideline. All right, so. Substitution in there at quarterback. 2.50 to go in the third. Clock is running here in Gastonia. It is now second down for the Griffins. Yep. Cavell this time handing off over there on the left side. Picking up about four or five yards. Let's see who that is. 21 on the touch. That would be Keaton Elliott. Junior? We're going to be calling a lot of names now that we have not called this season. This is now a third down situation for the Griffins. Looks like third and about four. And this time around, coming straight up the middle. Well, that is yes. Sam Caffell, the keeper. And he, he gets the first, but the ball got away from him, didn't it? Yeah, it did get away from him, but it's because he slipped on on his own feet, basically, because it wasn't surface. He, he slipped, and when he hit the ground, the ball came out, which is a good thing because it was a, de a dead play at that point. Highland Tech takes over. Or no. No, they don't. Still DJs. Okay. The one, the one official signaled that way. Okay. Now the handoff here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nothing doing. Stops right up at the 40-yard line. That's Elliott again. Elliott on the carry. Keaton, 5'9", 180-pound junior. And... So he... Let's see, he, let's see, he maybe lost a yard there. Let's... Yep, lost about a yard. East Rutherford got on the board. It's now 41-7. to seven. Whoa. They may already have a running clock. Here's the snap. Cavell handing off. Big hole over here on the near side. Across the 20. Up to the 19-yard line. That was a great run by number 23. That is Anthony Wilcox. And he is a sophomore. Five foot seven hundred seventy pound sophomore with great speed on that run. It'll be first and ten. Griffin, Highland Tech nineteen. We are down to fifteen seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Griffins start walking over towards the sideline, knowing that the clock is going to reach the end of the third before the play clock does. That will do it. Three quarters are in the books here tonight in Gastonia. And at the end of the third, our score is Thomas Jefferson, 45, Highland Tech, 6. This is high school football Friday night. Welcome to McDonald's. Uh, post a very in cafe. I'm sorry? Did I push a voir in cafe? Oh, ma'am. Our coffee is fancy, but it's not schmancy. Oh, okay. Then I'll have a small premium roast coffee. <laughs> sure. And you don't even have to pay in euros. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> More sophisticated taste to love. McDonald's premium roast coffee is made with a gourmet blend of Arabica beans. And now get any size for just a dollar. Prices and participation may vary. A la carte only. Tri-City Tire Service, located at the corner of 64 and Railroad Avenue in Ruth, is your reliable and affordable tire and auto service center. You can always depend on their professional staff for honest work on brakes, tires, alignments, and more. Tri-City Tire also carries sand, mulch, gravel, and dirt, 
and they are now a certified U-Haul dealership. See them today on the corner of 64 and Railroad Avenue in Ruth, or give them a call, 287-8778. Tri-City Tire Service keeps you rolling at affordable prices. For now, the Griffins move to the left side of the radio dial, all the way to that end of the field, moving from right to left here in the final quarter. This is the end of the field that you don't want to try a point after kick because it goes into the woods. And now the handoff, and here is number 21 for the Griffins again. That is Keaton Elliott, who picks up positive yardage and looks like he is down. Looks like about the 15 yard line. So it looks like it is second and five at the 15 for the Griffins. And step around, cutting through on the right side. 21 again? Okay. No, it is 23 who heads over toward the sideline half. Wilcox. That's Wilcox. Looks like third and five for the Griffins at the Highland Tech 15 yard line. Here's a snap. Chappelle's going to keep it himself. He's going to scamper in, and he's in for the touchdown. So the backup quarterback decides, hey, I'd like to have a touchdown too tonight. <laughs> and Sam Capel does just that, sophomore. And now at this end of the field, because of the woods, Griffins will line up and try to go for a two-point conversion. See if Caffell can pick up a two-point conversion. Mullins could not pick up one in the first half. And he pass into the corner of the end zone is caught. And the two-point conversion is good for the Griffins. Still trying to catch the number of the player who caught it over here. The corner of the end zone. Doesn't turn around yet. Can't see enough <laughs> Hold on, I'll left. Number 33. That's Isaac Rutherford. Oh, 23. Well, 23 is Wilcox. So the two point conversion works. The Sam Cavell connects with Anthony Wilcox. And with 10.36 to go in the fourth quarter, it's now Griffin's 53, Highland Tech 6. Quick college update. Understand Clemson's quarterback is out for the remainder of the game. Possible concussion. And Syracuse continues to lead the Tigers 17-14. to That's quite a game tonight. College action between Syracuse and Clemson. Now the kick following Fell's touchdown. And this one finally going to be taken, uh, picked up by the Rams and try to come clear across the field to this near side. A lot of side to side running there, but not much coming up the field. First and ten for Highland Tech. Defensive substitutions now for the Griffins as well. I see players out there I haven't seen this year. Here's the snap. High snap. Caleb Hill's going to take it. He finds a big hole coming up this near sideline. And he is being chased down from behind by Chappelle. But no, he is going to go the distance all the way into the end zone for a big, big Highland Tech touchdown. 
That one comes at 9.31 to go in the game. Quite a run there by Caleb Hill. I have no idea how far up the field he came with that, but I, I think they said 56 yards for the PA. Oh, it was farther than that. Had to have been. They were way down. Right, I thought it was. I believe more like 86. And now trying to go for a two point try, but out of bounds. That will fail. 50, 69 yards. 69 yards on that touchdown run from quarterback Caleb Hill. So they close the gap, and the Highland Tech Rams do have a couple of touchdowns now tonight. It continues to be Griffin's 53, but now Highland Tech with 12. Nine thirty-one to go in this one. You know, I can guarantee you, Coach Cash, even though there are backups in there uh, for his team, he's probably not too happy because these guys have been practicing with the varsity. And it's kind of that next man up mentality. If somebody, if one of your starters gets hurt, this is the guy that's going to be filling in the spot. So I guarantee you, somebody's still going to get talked to, even though it's fifty-three to twelve. Yeah, you're. You're trying to give your underclassmen some playing experience, but you do expect a certain level. Here's a very short kick covered up by the Griffins. I don't know if they were – if he was trying to go for an onside kick, that, that just didn't work. We do have penalty flags out here. Griffin's quick to pounce on the football. So the penalty against Highland Tech, they will end up re-kicking. Try this the second time around. Looks like TJ's got their uh, onside kick, their hands team in. Anticipate the possibility of another onside attempt. And this one's going to come right at us, and it comes out of bounds. Looks like it came out of bounds at about the Griffin 40. Looks like our official has spotted at the 39. Put it, put it right on the 40. I was just thinking about, you know, they're substituting in. The one thing you're not substituting in is those those big hog mollies, as uh, Dave Gettleman used to call them, hog mollies up front, the offensive line. Uh, they, they usually keep the beef up front. So the protection should be there for the quarterback. First and ten, Griffins. Snaps have to fail this time, handing off. There's number 15. Whoa. Wrapped up and dropped for a loss on the play. That's Maxwell. Cody Maxwell. And the Rams defense waking up here. Lost about three yards on that. Second and 13. Running clock with 8.20 to go in this contest. Griffins will improve to eight and zero, four and zero in the conference rights. East Gaston takes the lead, twelve to six, mm. over Chase with four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Bell this time handing off, and first man through is crossed forty up to about forty-four. That is number twenty-one. That is Keaton Elliott. Leave the Griffins looking at third and six. If Sam fell and company to 
to pick up the first down. Third and six. Is a snap. Here's a handoff over here on this near side. Still driving, still driving up close to midfield. And on the carry is number 23. That is Anthony Wilcox. Let's we'll wait and see where the spot is here. Looks like it's going to be fourth and a yard. Just short of the first down marker. And Coach Jerry Cash is going, you know what, young man? Go get it. Let's, Go get me a yard. Let's see if he can pick this up. So, all underclass, uh, underclassmen in there now for the Griffins. And this time, Cavell keeps it himself. Comes out near side, turns the corner, and is tossed out of bounds. But it looks like oh, he's yeah. got, yeah. That was he's a got great more read. Than enough. That was a great read. It was a read option, and he had the choice, obviously, of giving it to the running back or keeping it himself. But if he had to give it to the running back, so I thought he did. The running back got creamed by the defensive end. Uh, speaking of the line, I, I did say they kept their starting line out, but it looks like now they have it. They got uh, Big big John Celebrity out there. Let me give you his stats. He's, he's a senior. He's six foot six. 395 pounds playing left uh, left tackle right now. First and 10, Griffins. Capel had to go up here to Maxwell. Maxwell over here on the left side. Or check that. That's Keaton Elliott. Yeah, I'm not used to these numbers of, of these <laughs> younger players. Keaton Elliott, number 21. Elliott fumbled the ball, but I was just talking about Celebrity. He was the Mr. Man on the Spot dove on it, and now we have an injured player. One of the Rams in quite a bit of pain. And the trainer has come out to take a look at him. So breaking the action with 5.57 to go in the contest. Thomas Jefferson 53, Highland Tech 12. You're listening to High School Football Friday night. Go Force Termite and Pest Control is your dependable pest control company for Rutherford County. You can always count on Go Force for complete home inspections, moisture and water control, structural repairs, and waterproofing. Go Force offers professional work and customer service that is always guaranteed. Call David today at 287 3188. That's 287 3188. They are North Carolina licensed and have received the best of Rutherford County in pest control. Located on North Washington Street in Rutherfordton, Big or small, go force termite and pest control can handle it all. High school football Friday night, AM 590 WCAB. Jake Holmes along with Cliff Palmieri, one of our Highland Tech Rams, injured on that last play, still being tended to on the playing field. And I was looking to see if I have any other new updates to report in, and as of right now, nope, nothing coming in. The young man is sitting up. They're still sending to him. Stadium very quiet with the injured player being looked at. up on his feet, so he's going to be all right. Let's get the sign. Probably got his bell rung. So now with 5.57 to go, we'll get ready to resume action here in Gastonia. down for the Griffins at about five. And Wilcox. Wilcox takes it over the right side. and Many yards he picked up there. It's first down for the Griffins. I think the ball is up to about the 30-yard line of the Rams. Still getting some substitutions coming in from the sideline for the Griffins. First and ten. 
Sam Cappell handing off this time for Maxwell. Cody trying to twist and turn his way up the left side. And it's positive yardage there, a gain of about four. Looks like ball is up to about the Highland Tech 26. Oh, second and six for the Griffins. Down to four and a half minutes to go. I'm liking what I'm seeing for some of the youth for TJ. Here's the snap. And off. Again, as to this is Lil Cox. No, Keaton Elliott. Dang it, I keep missing his name. <laughs> Keaton Elliott, number 21. And he is hit after a very short game of about a yard. This will be third and five for the Griffins. <laughs> That's the most excitement I've had. Drunk right. fall, trying to juggle his cell phone. Hey, I got upset. I saw the, Cle the Clemson score. Third and six here for the Griffins. And here on the left side, cannot tell from this angle how much positive yardage got up the field, but that is number 23 on the carry for the Griffins, Anthony Wilcox. It is enough for the first down. For those that are interested, the Clemson is down 24 to 17. Oh. But it's still seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. Trips to the far side this time. Let's see if it could be a pass play in the making for Sam Chappelle. Here's a snap. No, here's a handoff. That is number two, Zach Love. Zach Love on the carry. Nope, sorry. No, wrong Ron Oster. Yeah, yeah. You're Number two. I say a McMullen. McMullen's, yeah. I say a McMullen. Sorry. <laughs> a uh, freshman. A freshman. McMullen's. First and go here for the Griffins. They said they're down about the 10 yard line. You can tell from here. Getting close. We know that. This is Snap. Caffell is going to keep it himself. He's over on the left side, and I think he's in. Yep, yep. Touchdown, Griffins. Second touchdown for Sam Capel. And that one comes with 2.24 to go in the contest. And now, once again, because this end of the field kick it and ends up in the woods, so try for a two-point conversion. Fell, rolling back a step, looking to launch pass toward the end zone, and being complete. So, Sam Caffell picks up his second touchdown of the evening. I'm going to call this one a nine-yarder, it looked like. And they try for the two-point try, but that is no good. But TJ picks up six more points. And that now gives them a total of 59 to Highland Tech's 12. Now, that's getting very close, but only 224 to go in the contest. But 63 in the game last week against Community School of Davidson. That tied the Griffins' all-time scoring mark at 63. They are getting very close to that now, only four points away with a total of 59 here in Gastonia. But only 2.24 left to go on the clock. This is a low script kick. And it rolls past. The Rams are having trouble picking it up. And now, picking it up and taking off the far sideline over on the TJ side of the field. And a nice return out to midfield for the Rams. That was number one. That's uh, Van Martin again. Wiley Van Martin. Uh, saw him in concert one time. <laughs> no, Wally, Wally is definitely a good athlete. He, he's not a large individual, but he is fast and he's elusive.
It'll be first and ten for Highland Tech. Seven minutes to go. Belmont, 48-7 South Point over East Rutherford. Here's the snap. Rams quarterback scampering over here toward the near side. Caleb Hill. And now, taking off with it, he is going to be tackled up at about the 40-yard line after a nice game. 48-7. Wow. Yep, but thanks tonight, Chris Clark and also Jason Patchett keeping us up to date. They both concur. They both agree, so... Therefore, I know the score must be correct. And South Point leads to East Rutherford, 48-7. to seven. Don't have any other updates lately. I wonder if there's anybody going, man, I wish Chris was back in our conference. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We do have time out here on the field. The clock has stopped. 68 seconds left to go in this one. Griffins are going to improve to 8 0, 4 0 in the conference. We'll have to wait and find out what happened in that game with Bessemer City. But it's quite possible that the Griffins and Bessemer City will both be the 4 and 0 teams, co leaders in the conference race. And of course, a big showdown next week as the Griffins travel to Bessemer City. Here's the snap. And came up Hill. Going to attempt to pass wide. Oh, he dropped it. He complete. He was wide open. Dropped it. Incomplete pass. Clock's still moving now. We're down to 50 seconds to go. Ball comes back out to the 40-yard line. It's the snap. Hill is going to take, oh, he runs right to a brick wall of Griffin defenders. And a little bit of a loss back to the 42. It's not the clock. They do take the final time out with 29 seconds to go. We'll keep it here. As mentioned next week, the Griffins have a tough challenge, probably their toughest thus far this season as they will make the road trip to Bessemer City. What could be a battle of two undefeated teams for the lead in the conference. Bessemer City tonight was a Pine Lake prep. We'll have to check uh, later for updates on that score. Uh, certainly on paper, would think that the Yellow Jackets would be able to improve to 8-0 and 4-0 as well over Pine Lake Prep. Yeah, the only update I got from Bessemer City was over an hour ago, and it was 16 to nothing, Bessemer City over Pine Lake Prep. Oh, well, then that's probably a pretty good shape. Well, it could be the last play of the game. Caleb Hill, the quarterback, coming to the near side. Has running room at the 30, at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. A 30-yard touchdown run by Caleb Hill. So the Rams... Still collecting some points. And after the play, of course, there's a, a penalty. Thirty yard touchdown run by Caleb Hill. And the coach the coach just gra- it's Martin, uh Wiley Van Martin who got that penalty. And uh coach is taking him to the locker room. He's walking him to the locker room himself. Wow. Touchdown was good, though. Yep. It goes with 17 seconds left up on the clock. And I imagine they'll try to go for a two point conversion try. Give them 20 points with two point. Virgin. Hell. Oh, that. Out of the Simple little slam pattern on the quick release. And the fans on this side of the field having reason to celebrate a bit because after being down 45 to nothing, 
They have now closed the gap. It's 59 to 20 in favor of TJ. Got a final for Bessemer City. Bessemer City 24, Pond Lake Prep 6. So, Bessemer City remains undefeated tonight. And that means next Friday night in Bessemer City, it'll be the 8 0, 4 0 Yellow Jackets hosting our 8 0, 4 0 Griffins. Now there'll be a kick following that uh, really nice 30-yard touchdown run from Highland Tech quarterback Caleb Hill. 39-point Griffin's lead. 17 seconds on the clock. Probably time for two plays. I don't know the running clock. Here's the kick. Dave by McMullins. McMullins at the 20. Now he's cutting back. He takes a slide at the 18, and that should allow, yes, the clock will run out. We have a final here tonight in Gastonia. It's quite a game. Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy, 59, Highland Tech, 20. Stay tuned now for the fifth quarter postgame show coming up next here High School Football Friday Night. Quality service at a value is what Tri-City Concrete Company, located on Withrow Road in Forest City, stands for. Whatever job you need, big or small, you can depend on these guys to get the job done professionally. Tri-City Concrete has been serving Rutherford and surrounding counties for over 30 years in concrete perfection. Give the hard job to the experts. Call Steve or Bill today at 245-2011. Tri-City Concrete, Withrow Road, Forest City. Sit back and relax. This mud's for you. Compliments of Tri-City Concrete. It's a for sure thing. Sisk Family Ford in Forest City is earning a quality reputation for offering an attractive inventory of new and used cars and trucks. If you want a new Ford truck, you'll be a smart shopper to let Sisk Family Ford quote you a deal. From a car for the newlywed to the car for the large family. Let the Sisk Family Company help your family get the best deal. Sisk Family Ford, Oak Street, Forest City. Man, this is not what I expected to see at this party. Yeah, I know. I want to hang out and have a good time, but I'm not cool with the drinking. This isn't going to end well. I want a boat, but look at Jimmy. He's supposed to be our ride. I'm not getting in a car with him. He should not be driving. Or drinking. Look, my parents talk about this stuff all the time. We have a deal. I can call them any time I need a safe ride home. No questions asked unless someone's in danger. What do you say? Yeah, call your folks, and maybe they can make sure Jimmy's okay. We need to make sure he's safe, too. Parents, United Way's Youth Council reminds you to talk with your kids about playing it smart and cool when they're out with friends. Talk with them about never getting into a car with an impaired driver, always finding a trusted adult to help, and taking care of themselves by not getting impaired, because it's cool for us kids to hang out together, but not at a funeral. For more information about Safe Road Safe Homes, call 2 and one or visit online at www.nc2and1.org. High School Football Friday night, AM 590 WCAB. couple of finals coming in now. Here in Gastonia, Thomas Jefferson has defeated Highland Deck by a score of 59-20. to 20. Shelby has shut out RS Central tonight, 51 to nothing. This just in, up the road, East Gaston has held off Chase to win that game 12 to 6. And the only game involving our local teams that uh, we do not have a final in yet uh, would be East Rutherford at South Point. And what was the last we heard? 48 to 7 in favor of South Point, the Red Raiders. So the Griffins tonight have done what a Rutherford County team has not been able to do since 1992. Uh, that is to start off a year 8-0 and and two, or make that 4-0 in the Southern Piedmont Conference race. Last time that we had a team do that, 1992 East Rutherford team coached by Bill Smothers. That team went 13-1 and losing in the fourth round of the playoffs 
that was Coach Smothers' second year as head coach at East Rutherford High. No Rutherford County high school team has done it until tonight. And now the Griffins, 8-0 overall, 4-0 in the conference race. They will travel to Bessemer City. Big showdown. Uh, under Sam Bessemer City has defeated Pine Lake Prep by a score of 24-6. to So, yep, it's set up for next week. 8-0, 4-0 versus 8-0. 4-0, it will undoubtedly be uh, for the lead in the conference next Friday night in Bessemer City. Uh, taking a look ahead, other games coming up next week. Our featured game of the week will come to you from Forest City. It will be the showdown between Chase and East Rutherford. That game to be played at East Rutherford next Friday night. RS Central will be at home next Friday night in Rutherfordton, hosting South Point. And uh, TJ, as I mentioned, on the road next Friday night at Bessemer City. Once again, our final score here tonight in Gastonia, it is 59-20. to 20. Thomas Jefferson improving to 8-0, and 4-0 in the conference, 59-20 to 20 win over Highland Tech. You're listening to the fifth quarter. For dependable and professional auto service, trust your car to Tri-City Tire Service. Brakes, tires, alignments, inspections, oil changes, and now Tri-City Tire is your complete exhaust service station. Commercial and farm tires are available at Tri-City Tire, and they are Rutherford County's number one dealership for interstate batteries, offering 24-hour roadside service. Tri-City Tire is proud to announce they will now offer U-Haul trucks, trailers, towing equipment, support rental items, and in-store pickup for boxes. They're open Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturday, 7.30 to 1. Tri-City Tire on the corner of Mountain Street and Railroad Avenue in Rutherford. Their number is 287-8778. That's 287-8778. Found Electrical Services has been providing quality electrical installation and maintenance since 1946. Quality work includes outdoor lighting, fuse box upgrades, ceiling fans, generators, motion sensors, and so much more. If it's an electrical need, Fountain Services can do it. You can always expect a high level quality of service, dependability and availability you have come to expect from Fountain Electric Services. Call 287-9978 or check the website at fountainservices.com. Farmer's Friend Feed, Seed, and Supplies is your landscaping supplies and feed headquarters. They carry neutrino feeds, hay, compressed alfalfa hay, and more. Erosion control material is available at Farmer's Friend, dog collars, leases for dogs, and the popular black gold dog food and other brands your dog and cat will love. Check on the wild bird food mix. You'll love the product selection at Farmer's Friend, and you'll love the prices. Check them out, 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, 7.30 till 2. Their phone number is 287-3272. Serving the foothills of western North Carolina for 50 years, we are AM 590, WCAB, Rutherford Dunn. High School Football Friday night here on AM 590 WCAB. It's the fifth quarter or post-game show. Griffin celebrating their 8-0, 4-0 season. 59-21 to tonight here over Gastonia Highland Tech. It is final in Belmont. South Point has defeated East Rutherford by a score of 55-7. 55-7. Red Raiders remain undefeated. What a night this has been. So the only victory for a Rutherford County team tonight is going to be by these Griffins, who improved to 8-0 overall, 4-0 in the Southern Piedmont Conference, and they defeat the Rams tonight 59-20. to So Shelby shutting out Central 51 nothing, South Point over East Rutherford 55-7. East Gaston has defeated Chase 12 Six. What a night. All the scores are in. It's not even 10 o'clock. This is amazing as well. Certainly want to thank Jim Bishop, also uh, Tracy Hauser, Luke Gillum, Todd Kaiser, our uh, Tom Green, and our senior engineer tonight uh, back at the 
Studios, pushing buttons, turning the knobs. Christian Go. Christian did a pretty good job. I guess we could mm-hmm. keep him. Yeah, we'll keep him around a little bit. Yeah. And he's, he's the one who's actively keeping us up to date with Syracuse and Clemson. Uh, what was the latest on that one? 24 to 24. Tied up. Tied up. But yeah. Clemson was, a, was driving, and I don't know if they turned the ball over or what, but uh, now Syracuse has it tied. So. Mm. Okay. Quite a college game there. You know, a lot of the college coaches, not big fans of these Friday night college games. I wonder if maybe in the future they'll reconsider that. But a lot of the uh, college co- coaches have been voicing their opinion that they feel like Friday night should belong to high school football. Uh, television has a lot of power, uh, but maybe enough of the college coaches will voice their opposition to playing on Friday night that uh, – they can they can change that in the future. It's a shame a big game like Syracuse Clemson in a football crazy state like South Carolina that they would even think about playing on the same night as high school football. Hey, we have one business one bit of business left to take care of. Hmm, wonder who could possibly be this week's AM five ninety WCAB McDonald's player of the game. Hmm. Well, hint. He started off the game tonight with four rushing touchdowns back to back to back to back to back. That would be four, wouldn't it? Back to back to back to back to back. back. Okay. Hey, no doubt about it. This week we say congratulations to number 20, Senior Bill Lay. Bill Lay, congratulations. You are this week's AM590 WCAB McDonald's player of the game. You'll be receiving a beautiful plaque from Casey Lancaster's. So our congratulations. A great job tonight by the Griffin. And a great job by number 20, Bill Lay, our AM590 WCAB McDonald's player of the game. Jacob Conley says he's had enough. He's going to go home. Oh, okay. You're going to go talk to the coach. Job, good night. Margie, good to see you. Jacob Conley here. Uh, you can read all about this game in the Weekender edition of the Daily Courier, which comes out on Sunday morning. So for the broadcast team, Christian Go back at the studio. Cliff Palmieri standing here on the sidelines in Gastonia. I am Mr. Friday Night, Jay Coombs. Certainly want to wish you a happy weekend. Hope you have a safe weekend. Great week ahead. As always, we certainly thank you for tuning in and joining us here tonight for High School Football Friday Night. And thank you so much, Jay and Cliff, who you guys do a tremendous job on site for these Friday night football games. And for Rutherford County football tonight, as you heard, unless you're a Thomas Jefferson fan, tonight was not a good night for you. I mean... Thomas Jefferson, our featured game of the week, was a 59 to 20 victory for the Griffins, who are now 8 and 0. The first time a Rutherford County football team has been 8 and 0 since the 1992 East Rutherford Cavaliers. Griffins certainly have a tremendous team put together this year, and they proved it tonight versus a very tough Highland Tech team. And that game, uh, Highland Tech, got to give them credit; they did not give up at all. I mean, fought to the end to make it a uh, – to put up 20 points on the board. And uh, Thomas Jefferson does end up scoring big-time points, 59 points. Man, I don't know – I don't I don't know how long it's been since Rutherford County has seen a an offense that's as high scoring as this Thomas Jefferson team is. Um, but it's certainly a treat to have if you're a fan of the Griffins. Now – our original uh, featured game for this week was going to be RS Central at Shelby. Uh, we decided to move it to the Thomas Jefferson game, which, looking at what happened in Shelby, was probably a good decision because RS Central, the only Rutherford County team tonight not to muster up any points at all as they got hammered 51 to nothing by defending state champion Shelby Golden Lions. The drought continues for the Hilltoppers against Shelby. East Rutherford, who looked 
extremely hot coming off of last week's win over RS Central 47 to nothing and the week before that defeating Polk County 25 to 7 they got upended by South Point 55 to 7 so it kind of lets you know where Rutherford County overall at least the three public schools where we stand when compared to some of the best in the state and we've got some work to do uh, of course I wasn't at the game I can't tell you exactly how things went down all I see is the final score 55 to 7 in favor of South Point over East Rutherford and yeah it's looking like a South Point Shelby race for this conference title this year and definitely want to keep up with South Point and Shelby when they meet each other I'm not sure exactly when that's going down I do know that South Point will be traveling to RS Central next week so the Hilltoppers it's not going to get any easier for them uh, of course they've had some injury issues and uh, Jaden Waddell I don't know what the situation was with him if he played tonight um, Hilltoppers are not going to have an easy rest of the season a rough first year for uh, head coach Brad Hutchins we look to brighter things in the future hopefully but uh, next week's not going to be easy finally uh, the Chase Trojans put up a heck of a fight against the East Gaston um, against East Gaston and that was the most competitive game of the night for the county teams unfortunately for Chase it ended up being in favor of East Gaston by a score of 12 to 6 a defensive battle going on there and Chase just blinked one times too many um, East Gaston able to come away with the 12 to 6 victory and it's not looking good for Chase this year either um, so just recapping for this week we have Thomas Jefferson scoring a big victory over Highland Tech 59 to 20 Shelby defeating RS Central 51 to nothing East Gaston defeats Chase 12 to 6 and South Point defeating East Rutherford by a score of 55 to 7 be sure to tune in next week for High School Football Friday night. Same bat time, same bat channel right here on WCAB Rutherford. Uh, that game will be East Rutherford traveling to the Chase Trojans. Should be an interesting in-county game. We already saw what East did to RS Central last week. And my, my guess is coming off of a game like this, East Rutherford is going to be playing to win. I mean, you play to win every week, but... They're going to have some extra fire next week, I would imagine. In the more immediate future, we have college football tomorrow. Uh, beginning at 1.30, it'll be the UNC Tar Heels taking on the Virginia Cavaliers in the oldest rivalry in the South. Uh, that game broadcast will begin at 1.30 p.m., kickoff schedule for 3.30 p.m. So look, tune in tomorrow to see how the Tar Heels fare against a Virginia team that started out the year 4-1. and one. So it will not be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination, but you can hear it all right here on WCAB. I'm Christian in the Blue Room. Had a wonderful night here tonight. Jay and Cliff, as always, doing a great job on high school football Friday night. Um, and that's going to do it for us for tonight. Hope everyone's had a wonderful day. Hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the night. And we now take you to the Salem Radio Network. 60% or more of their IRAs and 401ks vanished in the blink of an eye. And now many government insiders and top investors have been warning that another market collapse possibly greater than 2008 is coming soon. Now's the time to protect your hard-earned savings and safeguard.